Hey everybody, Vincent Janito here. Welcome to another episode of IGN Plays Live. I'm here with my buddies Peter and Wukash from CD Projekt Red, hey, hey. the makers of The Witcher 3, a little video game you might have heard of that you'll be able to play next week. It's pretty good. It's okay. I gave it a 9.3. Eh? Out of 20. Fine. Out of 10. <laughs> right, not out of 100. That would be a little bit less uh, generous. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we're going to sit here and play some Witcher 3. We're going to take a look at No Man's Land, which is kind of the first the first really big sandbox area um, in the game. You know, White Orchard is still pretty pretty sizable, but it's not one of the main. Exactly. No Man's Land is the is the uh, is the big main deal that you're going to be uh, uh, able to explore let's in the game. Let's see that map. Yeah, let's, let's switch it. to it. All right, so many of you guys might already be familiar uh, with this game map as we have showcased it before. So what we had in mind for today is uh, that we're going to uh, ride across it and show some sights and just show you how much freedom and how much uh, area you get to uh, explore in uh, one of the biggest parts of our video game. So as you can see, there is plenty of content <laughs> and we, were, we are definitely not going to be able to <laughs> check everything out. But uh, we want to show you like a decent portion of it. It's like comical almost. So now, um, now No Man's Land is actually the area south of Novigrad. So Novigrad is the is the big kind of cluster of pink and purple. That pink. over there, that city. Uh, yeah, and then up, up there uh, is Novigrad, and right. the rest below it is called No Man's, Land. No Man's Land. Well, originally right. referred to as. Valin, but uh, the recent situation has kind of turned it from a, a decent place to live to a not so decent place to live, but right. an excellent place for adventure. Yeah, you know, um, the, all the ruling class is pretty much uh, vacated at this point, and uh, it's just kind of, kind of the Wild West uh, in a way. And whoever wants to rule does. Uh, so, which is an element of the story. We don't want to spoil anything, though. So we'll, uh, we'll exactly. See Many people us. will thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So cool. So we're gonna take like a walking tour, right? We're gonna we're gonna head well, south and just see what we run into. Walking, running, and sometimes galloping as we <laughs> will continue the journey at some point uh, on horseback. So All right. Should we take a walk through the Novigrad or just skip uh, to the No Man's Land? Uh, uh, fetch a horse. Uh, that's what I would do. So right now we are on uh, Temple Isle, one of the northernmost points uh, of the map, and uh, this is a more relaxed part of town. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Roach is just trotting through the streets. As a horse does. Exactly. He's well equipped. He is and well I saw your he weight was limit. Just ha hanging yeah, around. I got a lot of gear, so yeah, I sir. had to buy a better uh, saddlebag. Yeah, you just have to probably have a yeah. saddlebag on so here. So we didn't want to run, run into much trouble, so we've set up a nice little adventure gear for Geralt. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, it's worth noting to uh, folks uh, watching at home, uh, we are playing on the uh, the PC version exactly. here, uh, which is running at a, uh, a pretty so silky smooth. I mean, I don't know exactly the number, but it looks like 60 or north of 60 to me. So yeah, um, can't really tell at home on the stream because the stream's mostly, uh, I think, kind of locked at 30. But uh, but yeah, it's looking pretty pretty schmexy, pretty uh, pretty pretty nice. We also like to like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Real quick, um, little uh, little bit of housekeeping. Remember, guys. Uh, right now, if you have any uh, any questions, requests, comments, if you think I just look funny or smell weird, I don't know how you know how I smell from over the internet, but uh, you does. can make a guess if you like. Hey, thumbs up. I get a thumb. Okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, anything you want to throw at us, uh, be sure to tweet at us. Uh, tweet at IGN uh, with a hashtag Witcher Three. And uh, we will be sure to uh, to answer as many questions, take as many requests, uh, or just scowl at you uh, over the mean things that you say to us uh, over the course of the show. Uh, all right. So to pick up where we left off, we are still in Novigrad, and we are going to sp uh, spend a little bit more time in it, just looking around at all the stuff that you can do. So this is obviously uh, the hugest, uh, the biggest city uh, in the world of the Wild Hunt, and you can do lots of stuff in it. Uh, you will have uh, numerous quests that you can embark upon. You will have uh, access to some excellent traders, uh, contraband goods, uh, whatever you might uh, want to buy or craft at uh, local vendors or, or craftsmen, and it's pretty damn huge and it's multi-layered as you will see as we're going to descend uh, leaving the temple bridge yeah the city's layout is really complex um, it's uh, it feels like an arc a really architecture like architected city like it doesn't feel like um, like a grid where it's just like oh you know here's a here's a square space and we put the shop this shop is there and that shop is there uh, it feels like 
um, someone designed a city and went, well, this is the area, surface area we have to work with, and we have to make a multi-tiered, multi-layered, real urban environment. You know, exactly. At least urban by, you know... It has always been worked on and designed as a proper living city, so not just an area that's different from all the other places. Like, if you look around, the composition and everything will be, like, on every corner you will be able to make, like, a postcard-quality uh, screenshots. Uh, oh, yeah. Our, our team spent quite a lot of time uh, designing the layout. And uh, most importantly, I would like to mention uh, our God Almighty, Lucian, uh, who had like a tremendous amount of work invested into uh, the city looking great. Yeah, and uh, certainly pulled it off. The city does look freaking gorgeous. Um, so we do have someone, someone has let me know that I smell like Doritos. Can you guys <laughs> confirm or deny the Dorito? I odor? have not had Doritos yet, but if this is what Doritos smell like, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you want Doritos? <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, let's see. Anyone on the we hash right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should cut the chase short. Yep. Nah, Woo! My favorite do not do not try this at home. <laughs> I actually haven't tried that dive yet. That's uh, That looks fun. Yeah, so you need to press B before jumping, and then you can trigger it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so we are in the favelas, just south of Novigrad. This is a little bit more, uh, not impoverished, but more uh, suburban area. Uh, under Novigrad, uh, you will see uh, these are cloth painters over here. So th that's why you have some fancy colors on the ground. Uh, and you will find all sorts of people here as well. Uh, uh, this is like uh, the area that has uh, all the supporting uh crafts and professions that uh, support and supply uh, Novigrad with stuff. Uh, the region is called Grassy Knoll and it's a more pleasant, uh, untouched by war uh, region of, of the game world. Yeah, again, and I'm going to be saying this a lot and uh, during this uh, during this live stream I feel, and that says a lot about the game. I mean, I played this game, I've now played this game about 120, 130 hours maybe. I don't think I've seen that district, except maybe in a side quest real quick. Uh, where I had to pass through it, um, which I, I won't get into, but it's just amazing to me how much there still is that I haven't seen and have no conception of. I mean, so much of it is just like, I had to pass here on the way there, but uh, th so many of these places have have a story, even if it's not an actual story quest. Like the, They all have, um, there's all a lore to it, and there's something you pick up just from listening to the, to, to the city folk and seeing what's around, and man, there's some beautiful beautiful vistas here exactly like uh, weird as it might sound uh, even I am going to act and uh, be genuinely surprised uh, by some sections of the world map because I'm supposed to uh, have visited and played through all of it yet there are unknown areas to <laughs> me uh, that I will uh, be surprised to see let me ask you a real quick question, Peter, because uh, we got a pretty good question in here from uh, from Twitter from uh, Arkham Inmate Twenty uh, Five. Wants to know that if uh, the best gear uh, will it be crafted, or if you earn it from quests. Uh, the best gear, uh, as far as I know, is uh, accessible through crafting. Yeah, that's what so, I've heard. So too. there's a real value to uh, what you're wearing. You cannot uh, just buy everything in shops. Like you will have access to some pretty decent gear from vendors, but the truly epic gear you will only be uh, be able to uh, wear if you craft it. It's more of about searching for receipts, fighting monsters that guard the receipts, and uh, exploring the world. So basically, if you find an awesome receipt and pay the time to, to do it, then you rewarded with awesome gear, Witcher gear, which is uh, one of the best gear in the game. Uh, but yeah, you can find a lot of decent gear by just uh, uh, exploring. I would actually take the, the opportunity to give a, a little glimpse on uh, the diversity and the variety of the armors that we have at our disposal in the game. So uh, I'm not sure about uh, whether we have the best, best gear available at this moment in our inventory, but we have quite a... a, a nice range of stuff that we can use so it's it's not going to be only parameters and data like uh, you are going to be able to dress up Geralt in fancy outfits and costumes each with different uh, unique traits uh, yeah we have some and they look pretty pretty look pretty different. nice range of stuff I stuck with uh, I was doing the cat school uh, training mm -hmm. uh, perk so I stuck with light armor through the whole uh, through the whole way, the whole way through. But I saw a lot of heavy and medium stuff that, just from a visual standpoint, made me jealous. I'm like, no, oh, I want to wear that. Exactly. I want to look cool like that. Exactly. And uh, this is like, again, the tip of the iceberg. Like, what are these Witcher pants you have? Uh, which one? Oh, those. The green ones. Yeah. That's uh, Griffin trousers. Ah, okay, cool. So that's one of the Witcher's gear. It's cool. You can fly with them. No, no, you can't. <laughs> nope. 
Well, should we change our swords as well? well yeah, exactly. Let's let's uh, put them on. Okay. We have some pretty nice stuff. Exactly. Yeah, the swords are pretty too. I don't know what we're gonna explore. Should we uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's let's go south, and uh, I I really want to show uh, the area below uh, Grassy Knoll, uh, Grey Rocks, even uh, further down to the south, and let's go to that uh, fort there called Hindholt. I really want to check that out. Uh, it's a nice place, but of course I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's let's uh, call Roach, and uh, let's uh, let's check out Grey Rocks. So this this was the the war zone where the two uh, armies uh, from the south and the north clashed and uh, ended up in a stalemate. So it, it's not going to look as nice as, for example, Novigrad and, uh, and Grassinol uh, in the north. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more desolate, uh, closer to an actual war-ridden. As a lot of the game is, and that's one of the things I really like about it, is that Novigrad, you know, when you look at Novigrad, I mean, right now, in the daytime, a lot of the areas you guys went to just now, it looks fairly pretty, um, but even there's a lot, even in Novigrad, uh, your first time in Novigrad, whoa, what's well, this? We got a quest. Yep, we stumbled upon. Yeah, let's event. see what this is. Another one. Run along home with the rest. Sir, show some mercy. We've not got nowhere to go. For us, it's Novigrad or death. I did for you lot. Sod off, or I'll have you skewered. Oh, hell no. <laughs> what should we do? Let's be merciful. Vince? Yeah, I, to let them they through, yeah. Desperate. Let them through. Just gonna be some combat. Fucking hell. Oh, no oh. <laughs> Guard. Redanian guard. This is... No, he's not. Is he Redanian? Yeah, he's... Would he uh, be Redanian? I think so. He... Wow. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a family establishment. I, I'd go like with uh, with our face value. Let him pass if you know what's good for you. Let him through before I get angry. You won't like Geralt when he's angry. Exactly. But I like those mittens. <laughs> oh, no. get him. Yeah, get him. All that's right. A, that's a great great plan. It'll work out wonderful for you. I didn't put any skill points in the tree, so that if you Ah, oh, you can totally do it. So, yeah, th this is something in the game. Uh, it, it does not scale to your skills. Uh, all, all of the challenges are, are mastercrafted, and uh, Wukash had a, quite a bit of doing in it, right? Exactly. So even without the skills, if you're a good fighter, like Wukash here, you can champion through it. <laughs> but you, you will take a lot of practice, yeah. He's not going to get up from that, I don't think. That's going to that's gonna hurt in the morning. All right. So we've got good gear, but no skill points distributed. So that kind of sets us in the middle. Sure. But uh, yeah, Axie, pretty good for this uh, yeah, this, for this kind of fight. Yeah, nice. you got a higher chance to instantly finish him. So mm -hmm. Yeah, Ax whenever you're fighting human like humanoids, I feel like Axie is, is pretty uh, is pretty strong. Well, it depends on the difficulty, for example. Uh, higher difficulty is, uh, I prefer to use the passive skills for, for the beginning when I'm not Mm -hmm. Alright. Nice. Well done. Ooh, yeah, off with his head! I was punished. It's <laughs> out of the ballpark. You scraped, you scraped by that. Uh, like you said, without the skill points allocated, it can be tough. Okay, let's maybe put some skills. Back. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's show the character screen after you get the swag from the guards. Of course, the most important currency of the game is. Your, your mic is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you let, out. Let here. me fix yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. We wanna hear that, we wanna have that beautiful yeah. voice. Exactly. Wugish, we wanna hear you. Okay. So, yeah, let, I'll give you an opportunity. Yeah, let's go through the skill because I, I think the skill the skill system in this game is way way better than it has been in Witcher One and Two. It's a huge improvement, one of the biggest mechanical improvements in the game. So yeah, definitely walk walk us through it. So which uh, tree did you use? Why? Doing a review? Um, I was very sign focused because I'm, I'm a big fan of magic <laughs> in games and uh, magic. Signs have always been kind of like to me one of the weaker parts of of The Witcher. It's always been like I wanted to use them a lot, but it didn't seem like a a huge payoff. But I felt the totally opposite way in in Witcher Three. Was I felt it more like, defensive or more uh, aggressive. Um, more can... more defensive. Like Quen to me, Quen is like huge. It's just such, uh -huh. especially when you get uh, it upgraded all the way. Well upgraded, it's really useful. Well, let's go that way. Oh, so let's talk it through. Yeah, Maybe let's first. let's talk about the system. What I really dig about it. Sorry to uh, steal the word from you. Is that uh, 
after you've spent uh, some skill points in uh, your skills, uh, it's not over, so you can still re-customize uh, what you can do in the game. So, mm -hmm. of course, uh, with every uh, level up you get or every place of power you visit, you get a skill point that you can invest in various uh, skills or abilities, like uh, combat moves, science, alchemy, and general skills. And uh, the things you end up with, you can sort out uh, on the middle of the screen you can see some empty slots and you can have based on your level uh, several of them active and uh, this will give you an opportunity to cus customize your uh, your character for the upcoming challenge because again preparation is still uh, an essential part of the game right and uh, the most important thing is that uh, you will get a lot of skill points throughout the game, but you cannot achieve a state where you are good in everything. You will you will get to a point where you're pretty good at something you, you wanted to focus your character on. Uh, so it's like a really important choice uh, uh, system, choice and consequence system to pay attention to, to what uh, you invest your points into. Yeah, the slot system I feel like is really what handles that the most, right? Because it doesn't matter how many skills, it doesn't matter how many points you put into each of these skills and how powerful each of those skills become, you're only ever going to have uh, tw uh, 12 total slots At skills most, you exactly. slot. so you can't you know even if you max out I mean I don't think you could even, you couldn't do it mathematically but even if you maxed out like 15 skills which you can't like even if you did you can't even slot them all so exactly. you have to pick that's, and choose that's part of the game and, and being prepared for example uh, you're building a melee uh, build and then you need to think how, how to compensate the lack of stamina regeneration, which you get from a science tree. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there are synergies, for example, gear, uh, runes that you have to take in, into consideration. Plus, you have to find those items, you have to craft them. So it's besides that being complex, you have to think about other things as well. Like there's and then there's the mutagens, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. And, that and that to me is a really to huge thing. Exactly. Because now, um, you know, each mutagen has its own little bonus, like 5% attack power, mm -hmm. 50%, uh, 50 extra vitality, um, it's sign intensity for the blue ones. But the idea is that once you, those go in the triangle, in the, I'm sorry, the, in the um, diamond uh, shaped uh, slots, and then for every matching uh, colored skill you have slotted in that quadrant, it, uh, it multiplies, it amplifies that bonus. So if you, it kind of, I like it because it's a really a reward for specialization. You know, like you really, uh, in a lot of games, it's all about flexibility, but the person who decides to focus on one thing kind of gets shafted. Mm -hmm. um, but what I like in this system is that if you have, say, like I was really heavy into signs, so I would have a 10% uh, a sign intensity uh, mutagen, and then I'd have that in three different slots, each of them fully slotted with three uh, blue skills each, and my signs were just bonkers like they just became so overwhelmingly powerful but that was at the expense of having literally no other skills in any other school and spending a lot of time searching for places of power that yep. gives you uh, additional points as you can see we i got around 101 points but we just found them before so it's not that easy to collect them yeah uh it's a really cool system it rewards uh, specialization and making uh kind of permanent decisions, but it's also flexible. Um, you can build Geralt out a lot of different ways. Exactly. Um, because uh, I've heard some comments that some people were worried, like new to the Witcher lore and everything, that Geralt seems like a very pre-made character with a lot of characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they were worried, like, how much freedom are they actually going to get sure. when uh, customizing skills? But as you can see, there is plenty of opportunity to create uh, a character focusing you know, on uh, combat, uh, science, which is basically our uh, kind of magic or, or alchemy and crafting so there is a lot of uh, opportunities uh, to try out your uh, individual uh, uh, notions uh, to apply on Geralt. I've got another uh, another cool question also from uh, Arkham Inmate25. Thanks for the good questions man. Um, wants to know can you kill or fight anyone you want at any time and I know the answer to this question but I'd love to hear you guys answer because I think it's very important. Uh, there is a certain limit to it. Uh, of course, you cannot kill everyone because uh, we, we wanted to maintain a, an atmosphere to certain locations. Uh, but uh, whenever you see a worthy enemy, you will be able to fight them. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, and just like to kind of piggyback on that, I like how the ways in which you guys limit that because I, I get it. People think it's fun. They think it's cool. It's an expression of freedom, I guess. But at the end of the day, killing every person in a village 
there's no meaningful way to advance forward from that story wise or gameplay wise to me. Like that's just not interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. the state of that it puts puts the world in is not interesting. So I'm glad you guys. There's so much freedom in this game. There's so much you can go out and explore and do and find. But it's not the Wild West. Like you can't just destroy whatever exactly. you want. And there's going to be plenty of other opportunities to uh, see the consequences uh, of your choices. So you right. you will not feel cheated because of this. Right, and that's much more interesting. Like the, those those ways of affecting the world are way more interesting than look. This place is a ghost town now because I killed everyone because I think that's funny, you know. Exactly. Yeah, still, you can try, but then you will have to fight the guards. You will probably have a hard time doing that and probably lose. But well, let's go. Cannot try kill a village, a whole village, but you can just try to mess with the guards. Exactly, because guards are going to mess you up like most of the time. Exactly. All right, let's continue uh, and. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, we, we've got uh, the location we wanted to check out uh, on the map, right? Not so uh, fast, Rich. Well, it's not that one, but let's check it out. That's totally Looks fine. Like an we interesting one all the same. We can we can totally check this out as well, <laughs> if you want to. Seems like a small outpost. No quest here. No, no, no. I I don't think it's a it's a quest location. Or at least not now, at this point in the story. Exactly. It's not, it might become one I uh, think later. What we want to check out is on the other shore. So, yeah, let's uh, yeah, try, swim try some swimming. I think the water looks gorgeous. I really dig how it looks. Oh, that's that's the thing, exactly. On the other shore. Yeah, so uh, we have plenty of un uh, underwater lo locations oh, yeah. uh, and uh, underwater exploration uh, for you to try. Uh, you will stumble upon uh, some uh, smuggler caches uh, every once in a while. Um, if you if you uh, explore, so all sorts of explorations are rewarded, and of course there are some uh, herbs that you can harvest and gather that only grow uh, here underwater. You might uh, remember the Griffin fight and the preparations from other streams and other gameplay yes. videos, like uh, it was a uh, part of the quest uh, to find Buckthorn. I think yeah. uh, it was called underwater, and uh, as you could see, there are uh, several other kinds that you can find here. And there will be a lot of others that you will uh, only be able to find at uh, certain specific locations. So, um, I have another uh, another good question here. Um, just a sec. Ooh, sweet. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, this is one, oh. of, the, one of the more special enemies. Yeah, I think she's gonna be pretty bad. Oh, she's level 18. Yeah, we can spend a little time explaining uh, what you can see in the interface and how it can help your uh, your adventure. Like a small bar above uh, the creature you see uh, contains uh, some bits of information. Uh, a green number you can see that is the character's, uh, I mean the enemy's level. Yep. And you can compare it to your level and uh, do the simple math. If it's higher than yours, you will have a hard time uh, defeating it. Uh, then the other bar, the most prominent one, which is currently silver, is the health bar. Uh, the color indicates uh, the kind of sword you need to use against them. Right. And uh, basically the lower it is, the happier Geralt is. <laughs> and uh, right under that, the little uh, plague yellow bar uh, is the, the stamina. The stamina, exactly. So if you bring that down, uh, they will have a hard time blocking or parrying your attacks. Oh. There's also a flashing uh, moment on a, on a health bar that indicates the time uh, open window for a counter-attack that Geralt can do. Let's finish off. Dead. Nice. Yeah, water hags go down real easy to fire. Oh, that was a nice fight. That's like a swag. <laughs> <laughs> always, always, never ignore them. All right, so we are at Grey Rocks, and if you take a look around, you will see that. Uh, oh, I, won't it up. Oh. I cannot finish a sentence without stumbling <laughs> upon some <laughs> quest or adventure, it's which so is hard. which is <laughs> an awesome thing. Well, let's just go. To yeah. The, to the fort. Yeah. So, really don't want to spoil all the adventure for you guys. So, if you're curious what the dead man has to offer quest-wise, you will need to buy the game and <laughs> <laughs> and read it yourself. <laughs> we're going to take a more casual, touristic approach. So, while we're looking for this uh, for this uh, loot cache, um, yeah, the question that came in. Oh yeah, sorry. From uh, from Deathwish. Thanks for thanks for watching. Um, wanted to know two things: what specs we're running this on, and. Uh, and uh, well, yeah, that's the first thing. So, what specs are we running this on right now? Is this is this medium? Is this ultra? Like, what is? It what? is ultra. We're on, is we're ultra. on ultra here. Okay, so this is as theoretically this is as good as it gets. Exactly. Cool. And uh, if you're also wondering what kind of a rig we're running this on, um, we've got a, a GTX 980 yeah. uh, under the hood, and 
I oh, actually, this is your own, you guys own rig, right? This isn't one of is this this isn't one of ours. This yeah, is one of yours. No, 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 it's ours. But it's the same thing. You guys have a GTX 980, and I assume a, a Core i7. Yes. Cool. Yeah. It's like, so uh, it's a pretty decent rig. Yep. So that's what we're that's what we're running on here. And uh, the other question was, uh, why did you guys feel uh, like adding a jump when when jump has not been part of the other Witcher games? Because uh, most importantly, we wanted to have an open world to give room to the amazing, huge story that uh, we had uh, in mind, and. Uh, Having an open world kind of calls for a lot more exploration, uh, a lot less gamey, a lot more analog, so, uh, so players can actually do what they want to do. Uh, and jumping is a vital part of that. So we wanted to uh, make it uh, very, very comfortable and immersive. And uh, if uh, you apply a lot of uh, decent exploration to your adventures, I think that helps you kind of immerse yourself better in the game world. And uh, we experimented a lot with it, and I think it works nicely. Yeah, I mean, I, I really, really dig the additional verticality of the game, uh, because exploration uh, like that is, is always a fun addition, if, if done properly. And I Sh think it's it's working nicely in The Witcher. It, sure, it I agree. It complements and, the adventure. And I think another important thing that, that shouldn't be underestimated is, like, when your character can't jump, it really constrains how you guys design the world, right? Like, it becomes, like, you have to think to yourself, oh... If I want there to be some kind of verticality, I got to make sure there's a way for this character for for Geralt to get up there th from some route, and I feel like that that complicates it, it. It kind of abstracts how you have to design the levels because then you can't make it look natural or look like a, exactly. a normal, a, like, like, like a map like that or a situation exactly. like that. You normally have to would. design slopes everywhere, and it doesn't yeah. look as natural. And the natural visuals and natural. Uh, uh, composition and uh, location design has always been a vital part in uh, designing the locations for The Witcher. Like, uh, you will see that uh, basically how we did it is uh, created a very natural environment like all the hills, uh, all the terrain, and then uh, applied all the uh, villages, locations, points of interest, caves and everything to it as it feels natural and right. uh, how it's convenient, how it eases into uh, the landscape. Sure, absolutely. Every single location has been designed like that. And uh, yeah, basically, if you wouldn't have exploration, you would have to force a lot of gamey solutions to the level, yeah. and it really wouldn't feel nice. Like, uh, we have tried many things, we have tried that as well, given ease of access without uh, jumping uh, uh, or, or massive exploration uh, to, to, to places, and it doesn't feel natural. It's not good. So, Wukash has decided. He's made, this, he's made a very, very big move here. He's like, you know what? This is just too easy. I'm too good. I'm too good at this video game. Yeah, I played a lot. I played a lot. So, so to make things a little bit more interesting for you folks at home, Wugish has moved us up to the next difficulty level um, from where from where uh, from where you guys were. He also likes to live life dangerously. Hey, you're a witcher. You gotta live a little dangerously. So, um, before we jump uh, back in and see more what's going on here, um, let me just uh, quick plug. You guys are watching IGN plays live. Right now, uh, we're doing The Witcher 3 at the moment, but we've got a lot of other uh, stuff coming up this week and later today. Uh, so let me run that down for you. Uh, right after this stream at 3 o'clock uh, will be a live edition of Podcast Beyond. So uh, so stay tuned with us afterwards for that. Um, later on in the week, on Friday, uh, we will be starting at 12 p.m. with some Rock Band 4. And uh, and then we'll, we'll be doing that again on uh, Saturday, um, uh, rerunning the... Oh, no, I'm sorry. My bad. That's not Saturday. I know how to read. Yeah. So, Rock Band 4 will be Friday at noon. Same channel. Um, and then at uh, 1 o'clock on Friday, we'll be doing more of The Witcher 3, uh, The Wild Hunt. It's a game that you're looking at right now. Uh, next week, Tuesday, uh, we will be at 10 a.m. going uh, over some Destiny House of Wolves, the new Destiny expansion. And then uh, also on Tuesday, after that at 1 o'clock, we will be doing even more. Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. So lots more coming up from IGN Plays Live, uh, both today, later in the week, and next week as well. So um, that said, all hell is breaking loose over here right now. <laughs> You're fighting some harpies. Exactly. Yeah, we have stumbled upon a harpy nest atop this uh, long abandoned dungeon. We're waiting for them to uh, re-emerge from behind the walls. Oh yeah, let's try some items. Yeah, the crossbow. Ooh. Oh, that was a miss. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Need to wait for her. Whack a harpy. It'll come back. They usually do. There she, you are. She jumped right, right. Oh, nice. Still on fire slightly. She might die in the air. No. That's, 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 
One of my favorite things was uh, hitting them with art as they came swooping in, and then watching them spiral down to the ground. Yeah, yeah, I love them. Where is she? You totally missed that. I know. <laughs> okay, let's Like, you should have seen Wukash the other day. He kills, like, uh, cats, dogs, and goats with such ease <laughs> <laughs> when just strolling on the back paths of the land. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. All right. Well, there's a nest there here, go. right? There you go. Nasty, nasty. Nice. Done. Like it. Woo. I like it. All right. So we are at a location that I think has a harpy nest, which you can destroy. Uh -huh. I think it's uh, it's on the outside. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Swag, swag, swag. I know. Swag. Gotta get that swag. Ooh. Uh -oh. We have found some pretty you got awesome. A, you got a Witcher. You got a Witcher uh, uh, yeah. diagram. The the Griffin sword, I think, right? And a new crossbow that I cannot equip yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't see very many of the Witcher diagrams uh, throughout the course of the game. Uh, those were whenever I saw one, that was like a woo, you know. I got it. Yeah, so this is shiny. one of the locations that you might want to visit uh, for them. Wow. Oh. All right. So, um, so we got a question from uh, Ryan Roselle um, on Twitter. Thanks for uh, thanks for tweeting at us, Ryan. Yeah, there uh, it is. He asks, uh, how many different potions are in the game? Bukash? Well, let's go through it. Um, we get the basic versions, which you can see here. Um, those are probably easy to to, to get the receipts and craft. Uh, Some of them might find uh, sound very familiar from earlier Witcher titles. Yeah, and then there's there's also the beside the the potions, which there's there's I think uh, these aren't all the potions. I don't think. No, right? this is are not the all the potions. And then we have more. the upgraded versions, which have more stacks, more and, uh, higher effects. And, and there's two upgrades to each, right? Yes. It's uh, there's the it, the enhanced and the super version of of each of those. But then going even beyond that, there's obviously oils, which make their return. A lot of different oils, but then there's the decoctions. And the decoctions are really interesting. I don't know if you have any of those. Uh, no, I not. But the decoctions have so many crazy effects on them. Like, that facilitates specific uh, play styles. I saw one decoction that uh, reduced, uh, like, massively increased the fear threshold uh, mm -hmm. for your horse and made, like, all your mounted attacks do way more damage. So it's like a, it's a potion that you just quaff. And then you just become this killing machine when you're on your horseback. Yeah, it's amazing. You're telling me all sorts of cool things about the game that I didn't even. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I, the decoctions, I think, add a whole lot uh, to the potion game. But the thing with the decoctions is that they're very powerful. So because they're so powerful and they last for like 10, 20 minutes at a time, a lot of them, their their toxicity is like 80 or 100. Like you yeah. need if you if you drink that potion, you're not going to be drinking swallow. Yeah, it's a good synergy with alchemy build. Uh, right. So yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. What should we do? Should we go visit some other places? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's go check out uh, White Eagle Fort, maybe. Okay. White Eagle Fort. Exactly. It's not too far away, and uh, we will get to see a little bit more of uh, of Grey Rocks, the the northern part of it. Yeah. So this this location, for example, is not uh, part of the quest. It's just a dungeon that you can explore. And uh, it has, uh, for example, cool swag and a bunch of uh, pretty cool monsters that you can fight. And uh, you will find uh, a whole bunch of these locations that you can explore. And, and uh, some of them have some really, really cool challenges, but uh, you're going to find some uh, really epic loot behind. Or maybe we should uh, see the Devil's Pit. Oh, we can go to the Devil's Pit as well. Place. Definitely. It's fast travel there. Yeah, I like the fast travel system that you guys went with. It's uh, it's not completely unrestricted. I th but but it's uh, it's a nice balance between being like, hey, there's no point in me walking anywhere, and I'm never going to walk anywhere mm -hmm. because I can just fast travel everywhere. And like uh, and the alternative, which would be like, hey, no fast traveling at all. It's a you know basically if you're at a fast travel point, you can go to other fast travel points. But if you're between fast travel points, you have to get to a fast travel yeah. point. Exactly. So you your exploration is rewarded, and it's not too digital. So th it's not like you can catch a ca uh, cap anywhere in the game world. Right. Exactly. And like you said, like like Lucas said, you you have to discover them first. Mm -hmm. So exactly. Um, at least at the start of the game, you really have to at least go everywhere on foot once um, before you can. Exactly, fast you need to around. unlock them. 
uh, works the same way with the sea fast travel points. So yeah, the Devil's Pit, uh, a little lower. Like uh, Grey Rocks uh, got its name because of the granite repositories. Uh, it has basically the city of Novigrad was built out of the pits uh, of, of Grey Rocks. Uh -huh. And uh, this is one of the old quarries uh, that has been uh, closed down and uh, is being used for something completely different. But you will find that out in the game. <laughs> And uh, in this particular case, you uh, you can find some folks there who do not like you being there. I think I need to switch the difficulty level because of my green is not that good. <laughs> ah, you're right. doing good. You're fine. Uh, yeah, getting beat up a little bit, but oh yeah, fin finish him. Yeah. Oh, nice, lovely. So yeah, we can take a little look around, see see how different this this place is. So yeah, this is what I enjoy a lot in the game that there's a great diversity in the locations while still maintaining a lot of visual consistency yeah i, I careful I, the drop is pretty <laughs> yeah that would be scary i i really do like the fact that um there isn't too much an overabundance of variety right like there's there's variety in terms of architecture there's variety in terms of you know what the locations actually are but in terms of their style and the overall ecosystem it's more or less the same but that's good. Like it, there's a unity of place to 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 the map in uh, in Witcher Three. So there's consistency, but there's still a lot of diversity. Yeah, you know, you don't feel like you're looking at the same thing all the time, but everything looks like it's from the same place, which is how it should be. Exactly. Oh, nice. There's not that much space. Well, he's not dressed for our combat style, right? <laughs> this person is basically fighting nude. You just you just killed the dude in his underwear. How does that feel, Wookish? Awesome. <laughs> it's not very knightly of you. <laughs> no, it's not. But they witchers aren't exactly the most honor. They, you know, exactly. honor is not really their thing. Exactly. As he says, we are not he here to preach morals, right? Right. Well, uh, when it comes to combat, there are no, there's no honor. You yeah. just have to beat them. But exactly. Um, so we have a, a, another pretty good question uh, that came in. Um. And this is something that I've been wondering myself. I've read some things about it, but I don't have. I've never seen a definitive answer. What is the level cap in Witcher Three? I think it's. Uh, you know that better. Well, uh, we don't have a level cap. You can uh, level. The, I don't want to. Uh, the last skill point yeah. is unlocked at fifty. Is yeah, what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what I've. Is what I've heard. Yes. Um, and I know that from my travels in the game. <laughs> Which are by no means like definitive and like comprehensive and complete because mm -hmm. there's still so much in this game I haven't seen. But I've seen gear that requires at least level 39 to wield. Yeah, yeah. There um, are some pretty epic gears with high requirements. Yeah, yeah, and I hit and I hit level I hit 30 with the last stroke of my sword in the story. Mm -hmm. like, nice. I you know when I killed the last thing that you kill in yeah, this game. There's, there's a lot of content that just proceeds further away mm -hmm. after you reach. Uh, yeah. Level. So long play is yeah. rewarded. Like uh, you won't ha find the, the best gear by the half of the game and play the rest of the game with that. So you will find some pretty interesting stuff uh, by the end of it if if you've spent some more time. I'm yeah. Stuck the, with the troll. It's this is an place. awesome, awesome, awesome side quest. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Redanian army. Where are you hiding them? <laughs> In, in here, me, no seamans, join me, King Ravodidami. <laughs> Ravod exactly. <laughs> I did the voiceover. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. no. <laughs> <laughs> I would feed that character. <laughs> yeah, if we're obviously, if you haven't, because uh, you haven't played, most of you haven't played, shouldn't have played, unless you're a critic or reviewer, but, uh, yeah, the king's name is Radovid, not Ravadid. Exactly. But he's a troll. You give him a pass. Well, he's not a grammar Nazi, right? <laughs> Why'd you join the army? Someone recruit you? Good? No good. Come good soldier man. Say charger man. boats. Peasanters, they skills. Peasanters, boats. He's a very keen soldier. <laughs> Think I do. Danian seized some peasants' boats. Thought the peasants might try to take them back. What happened did next? You, did you do that quest? <laughs> no, I didn't. Alright. Soldier man's drink. 
and sing, not sing. Listen, troll. <laughs> Both. Come, peasanters, swing sharpy sticks. <laughs> I love that. I God. help one army. Runner to runner. Holla, peasanters. Holla, soldier mans. Gentle. Gentle. <laughs> Move them apart. But all light down. Soldier mans do. <laughs> My Got order to... had me I get it. Boats. And what I troll a little soldier man now. That's his name, by the way. <laughs> sing too. You for sing you? No thanks. Ah. Come on, girl. Don't be spoiled for it. <laughs> Hungry though. Should no waste. Peasant is good food. <laughs> Soldier man, friends, not so good big stew, <laughs> always good. <laughs> Guess I understand, wartime rules. Man's soldier man too? Uh, -oh. uh no. <laughs> <laughs> Makes man's soldier man. Trollo, charging man, say, bring paint, and man, Breathe paint. Uh, paint? What are we talking about? <laughs> Geralt, I love how Geralt is like so embattled and flustered in this game. Like he's like, guys, I just have someone to find. Like I, <laughs> I don't have time for this right now. Exactly. After having killed a bunch of creatures and all sorts of enemies, you end up in this conversation. Yeah, you're like, what? Fine. I'll try to find some paint for you. Good man. Retain the army. No service forget. So, <laughs> let's. <laughs> Love this bit. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's enough. I want the MP3. Um, <laughs> as a ringtone. Love it. Um, so. We do have a request uh, once we, uh, mm -hmm. we do this quest, do, do, do our thing. But uh, someone, uh, some people want to see Gwent. Whoa. Some uh, some Gwent, Gwent. We, we didn't really want to do right now uh, because it takes a lot of time to get into it. Yeah. And I think more people, like uh, judging by the feedback we got earlier, would be looking forward more to the action for, uh, for okay. open world exploration. So on... Unfortunately, we'll have to disappoint this one uh, fan. Okay. Learning the basics is, takes time and exactly. you sure. have to go through it. Yeah, this so. is something we actually wanted to talk about. Like, uh, our mini games are not mini games per se, just to, for the sake of having mini games in the game. Like, yeah. Gwent is a full fledged, uh, awesome sub game in the whole game, uh, totally part of the whole lore. Uh, plus, uh, you can ga uh, gather a lot of uh, game cards, I think 140 mm -hmm. game cards throughout the game world so yeah. it nicely ties in with the rest of the adventure Gwent. it's a very very cool thing but it takes a lot of time yeah Gwent Gwent is uh, is pretty darn good um, yeah you guys definitely took a instead of like a bunch of little like shallow mini games mm -hmm. you definitely took the let's make one big mini game that kind of uh, spans the world and kind of connects everything I don't and, even uh, think it's fair to call it a mini game anymore. yeah it's yeah, not yeah. in the same way that like you couldn't really call like Blitzball a mini game in Final Fantasy 10 or mm -hmm. you know triple triad a mini game like those are those were just games that were within a game and Gwent definitely feels that way um, but uh, no Gwent today but uh, but you can surely try it out in a full game. Oh, I, yeah. I, I know that sounds bad, but still. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm actually planning a, a feature on Gwent. I actually That's really awesome. like Gwent, so I'm, I'm going to be doing a feature just about Gwent and my thoughts on Gwent. So now we are closing in on Oxenfurt. This is uh, where King Radovid the Stern presides with his uh, part of the army, and it's uh, not easy to access. No passage. Case of the plague surface in the city or something? The plague? Uh, no. We're to not let folk in the city. It's an order, so I don't, unless someone's got a pass. What kind of pass are we talking about? Well, a normal one. A transit pass. <laughs> Who issues them? How should I know? I'm a lonely soldier. <laughs> Self awareness. You're talking to the you're talking to the messenger, yeah, like wow. Alright, so Wukash, do you know any way to get around this gate? Yeah, we can take a shortcut. Alright. 
a hi- shortcut. I highly encourage you to take the shortcut. Is this a, a shortcut of the legal Yay. variety? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it's it's a shortcut of a very dangerous variety. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is again to emphasize that the open world is not a linear adventure. Like if you can find or uh, come up with a with a solution, an idea, a workaround uh, to get into places, then you can probably do it. And and. Uh, and just solve situations like this. Even the monster contracts. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But uh, I feel like even the monster contracts, the the monster, like picking up the monster contract uh, to kill uh, to kill a mon- to hunt and kill a monster mm-hmm. from a notice board. That's not what generates the monster. The monster exists no, there no, in no, the exactly. world. Right? So you could theoretically, you could just be mm-hmm. wandering around and you could stumble this is upon. This a very important and very very cool part of the game. So every monster uh, uh, there is a contract for is a part of the game world, a part of the environment, and there are several ways you can make contact with them. Like, uh, for example, as you said, you can pick up the contract from signposts, uh, know, learn about the monster, and then track uh, their marks down and, uh, and uh, get to them. Or you can stumble upon their marks uh, by your simple exploration. So, uh, basically, you or can... by just st- talking with some... Uh villagers exactly like village. you can even eavesdrop on two villagers talking like uh, there's been some mysterious disappearances and stuff like that and that kind of gives it gives you a point of interest on the map mm-hmm. or something to uh, examine or you can actually stumble upon the monster and and uh, duke it out and then find out whether there was a contract for him some contracts will be cancelled if you kill the monster before finding the contract bec- uh, contract because the people will go like uh, uh, reward no no reward uh, Go have fun in the forest, whatever monster you kill, uh, for free, of course. <laughs> Should we take a mm, tour of your boat or just go for the uh, troll quest? Let's, let's go back to... Uh, okay. Or well, it's, it's up to you. Vince, what do you want to do? No, let, let, let's, 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 let's do troll all uh, uh, a solid. And, uh, <laughs> let's get his pain. Let's, let's, let's get some pain for troll all. Right. He seems like a good sort. Maybe let's sing us another song. Exactly. It's highly rewarding. Let's let's get back to Oxenford because now we have found passage. And trolls are are uh, definitely not the uh, the type that you want to, you know, disappoint. The, you don't want to troll a troll. No, no, you don't. So yeah, you just were like, well, forget everything. I'm just gonna jump off this bridge and swim to shore. <laughs> well, they probably think you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is Oxenford. It's uh, another city in the game world. It's not as big as Novigrad, but it's it's a fairly decent city. It's uh, right next to Gustfields, a uh, fairly rich region oh, of the world. Yeah, and this is this is a hot uh, a hot spot for uh, artists. Yes? yes, yes, this is a place we wanted to check. Ah, uh, yes, it's here not we go. One. Yeah, is, the, it, is it that one? Uh, uh, no, it's a different barber, but still, this is uh, where you can get fancy. No, the other barber uh, is in Novigrad, but we can go there as well. Yeah, there's a few barbers I've I've okay. I've, uh, I've I ran into a barber in a random, a pretty random out in the middle of nowhere I island in uh, good in uh, in one of the other game areas. Mm-hmm. There are several. So, real time beard. Yep. In action, which is awesome. And actually, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but whether or not you let that beard grow out will impact some uh, some conversations that you have later in the game. I don't know if you know the ones I'm talking about specifically. I don't want to get spoilery. Uh, but let's not get into that. Yeah, okay. Into the details. Okay. Well. Oh, you're a completely different person, Carol. I'll say, you know, I, will, I what I'll say is, someone noticed that I that I let myself my, my hair grow out, and uh, yeah, worked out in my favor. I'm just gonna say that. So long. <laughs> it's a neat detail. <laughs> uh, that looks awesome. All right. Yeah, that's my favorite. You're you're fabulous. I need to change armor. <laughs> because it doesn't go well with your current yeah, hairstyle, of course. My hairstyle. So, uh, back to Twitter for a second. Uh, Janet Kowalska, uh, thanks so much for watching, Janet. Um, uh, throws to us, wants to know, after the story, can I still play in the open world? And I can answer that one. I know, of course, that you uh, you can. Uh, after you defeat the, uh, the final challenge, uh, the game will kind of bring you back. It'll reinstate the world state uh, from right before that fight. And just put you out in the um, in the open world, but without access to story quests. Mm-hmm. So you will no longer be able to do anything that's story related. It um, does not mean you cannot affect the world. There are still there are still side many, quests many locations. and many locations where you can change uh, the world and, and see the results of your decisions um, on the lives of the people 
of uh, of the land. But Plus, as you have mentioned earlier, by the time you finish the story, you probably have not maxed out your character yet. And, right. Uh, you have you still have a, a lot of room for development and a lot of other challenges that you can find in the game world that you can prepare for and explore. This is uh, another um, feature. For example, if you encounter a shopkeeper who uh-huh. specializes in some uh, some part of uh, well. Some some form of commerce that they yes, are focused yes. on. Yes, you cannot sell them items, every items you want, right. to, because a guy who's a herbalist doesn't want your swords or your bombs. So vegetarian uh, herbalists will not yeah. be interested in your meat products. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. and, and what <laughs> so that's, that's important part of economy. It is because something that I found early. First of all, something I really appreciate about the game, and this is even on normal difficulty, not even on hard difficulty, which I, I can't wait to dig into uh, more. But uh, even on normal difficulty, I found that early in the game I was broke all the time, mm-hmm. and I love that. Because um, RPG, in most RPGs, honestly, you reach a point very quickly where you're just so rich that money doesn't even matter anymore. Exactly. And you just don't care about where you earn it or how you earn it. It's just always there when you need it. And that was not the case for, like, you'll reach a, I, I, you'll reach a point in the game where you'll get a pretty nice payday. Again, don't want to be spoilery. Don't want to say what that is. But you get a pretty decent payday, and that will kind of fish you out of whatever hole you might feel like you're in at that point. Exactly. And kind of set you up pretty well. For the rest, uh, for the rest of the game, but even then, you can't be reckless with it, with your mm-hmm. money. Like you always have to be careful about, you know, how much wear and tear you're putting on your equipment and, and spending money to repair it, and and buying, uh, and buying and selling things is always really important. Like the the pelts that you get, um, the pelts are some of the best selling items in the game, mm-hmm. but there's so few vendors that will mm-hmm. actually purchase them. So yep. if you find a vendor that'll buy a wolf pelt, buy a bear pelt, buy a horse hide off of you... Then you can get rid of them from your inventory. You can, but you, still, their money repository is limited. So you cannot just spam the pelts on everyone. Exactly. That's the thing, too, is that even if you find a, a, a vendor that, that does buy and sell that stuff, if they only have a couple of hundred crowns in the bank, they can probably only buy so many off of you. So it's uh, it's interesting. The, the economic model is actually surprisingly... Uh, uh, it's refreshingly kind of stingy and realistic where you have to and you can kind of make a living if you want to like if you want a few extra crowns or whatever if you pay attention to the prices in the different regions you can actually uh, benefit from the situation like uh, buy cheap sell uh, sell expensive right and uh, yeah this is something our game designers put a lot of effort into so everything you have in the game uh, has value so there's no real junk you will find junk items of course uh, but even they have value yeah, and still you can uh, dismantle Dis- dismantle them yeah. and make them into exactly in- into ingredients. Yeah, yep, and raw materials. All right, follow. <laughs> Just so happens I have some paint on me. Uh oh. What's the matter? Has paid. <laughs> no skills. General trait of any troll. <laughs> yes, Gerald, please give give the troll painting lessons. What? Birdo cutlery. Redania Birdo. Shields life. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do totally it. do it. Gerald's got this. Got a brush? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's my next tattoo right there. Man's good. No like other man take juice. He likes us. <laughs> good stuff. You see the paint? Yeah, exactly. It's there. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. So there you go. Your choices change the world, folks. <laughs> exactly. Another day, another huge difference. Geralt made. <laughs> Saving the world. <laughs> exactly. One troll at a time. That's terrific. So so uh, let's stop for a second and look at the map. Oh, I yeah. want to see how far from our starting point have we have we actually managed to venture. So, yeah, we actually didn't cover as much distance as we wanted to, but I think it's perfectly fine. And we also fast-traveled. Tra- tra- yeah. fast tra- mm-hmm. Exactly. You cheated. <laughs> you yeah, cheated. To make it good. <laughs> so, in the past two hours, uh, we have done uh, distance between that point that uh, Wukash just highlighted now and... Uh, that point. Yeah, it's been we've we've been on for about an hour, but uh, still, that's uh, that's there's still so much more to go, <laughs> and so much we passed along the way. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, one hour. Exactly, not two hours. I, I'm off by an We're hour. We're here for another hour still. <laughs> exactly. Don't try to run out on me yet. Just be, just yet, Peter. 
All right. So let's continue our exploration. Cool. And uh, let's go further south. What do you say? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, actually, um, why don't we show people an abandoned site and what that's all about? Uh, which one? Uh, Just that one, right? How, how about that one oh, right exactly. there? Yeah, make your way down to that one. So now abandoned sites, uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Now abandoned sites are places, uh, little townships or little uh, kind of vendor areas that have been abandoned because of a nearby monster mm -hmm. infestation. Exactly. So uh, these there are places that usually there's nearby uh, monster layer of some kind. And if you slay, if you get rid of that monster pit, then uh, theoretically people can come back to that area. <laughs> that was just disrespectful, Wukish. <laughs> Maim the dead. Uh, so they're going to be uh, quite similar to what we saw on the top of that tower. So there's going to be a nest uh, surrounded by a lot of monsters. And uh, if you can get rid of that nest uh, by putting a bomb inside that uh, destroys it, uh, then you can uh, basically uh, uh, remove the infestation from that area and uh, people will reoccupy uh, that uh, particular place. So, uh, for example, that might unlock a lot of interesting things. Some quests, maybe sure. uh, unique vendors that can uh, take off, uh, take the pelts off you, uh, or several other things. Those guys are away. persistent. Yeah, they tough. Oh, it is a lovely place, Grey Rocks. Bunch of oh yeah, dead people. <laughs> Just. Just so picturesque. Some, some of the uh, gallows, uh, you can actually read some notes about the dead people hung. I think. Oh, wow, yeah. Exactly. Found guilty of fleeing the field of battle and endangering the lives of the, his brothers in arms. And now he's swinging. Yep. That's All right. Cool now, that's, that's kind of, I, that's a lot worse than what, how they do it in things in Skelligrad. In the, mm -hmm. in the, in the Skellig Islands. Skellig um, Islands. Yeah, where they uh, people who abandon the the battlefield there are branded as they, they lose their name. They basically don't have an identity anymore. They're shamed. Uh, their family is shamed. Oh yeah, like uh, they get to again, live again. We don't want to spoil uh, ma major story <laughs> elements, but uh, there are parts where where you can actually learn about this part of the lore. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, there's there's that's what I love about about the world is that there's. There's every there's different kinds of people who have different kinds of traditions, and those traditions matter, and they play a role not just in the story, but just in um, your interactions with them and the conversations you have. It's uh, very cool. Exactly. So we whoa, have. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, careful. Drowners are so treacherous early in the game. Yeah, and they are quick. Yeah. Like you, you would you would think like yeah, they're the mobs that I'm going to just slash for experience, but no. Just a sec. I need to tune something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Bookish <laughs> has given up. On his, you can do this. I yeah. believe. I believe. Oh, oh, oh. Lucas, I believe. Uh, I'm yeah, really, Igni is really everything. rooting for Igni you. Igni is everything against these guys. Oh, fire beats water. Yep. Careful. Igni. Yep. Yep. Just let him die. We need to make a save. For <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Yes. Oh, sweet, <laughs> sweet victory. Whew. And uh, this is your reward. People come back. Awesome. And now some of these vendors, they might have a quest for you. Mm -hmm. um, they might uh, they might sell you rare items. They might have things um, like di you know recipes, diagrams that you might not be able to get anywhere else. And they will repopulate the area. For example, yeah, this is a merchant. Wouldn't mind a look at your stock. So cool. He's got some. He's got some runes for. Uh, oh, a greater, a greater rune. That's nice. Let's buy some chicken. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. You need to. You need to eat. You need to get your health up. Conan's favorite. That's <laughs> on the sandwich. Oh uh, yeah. Exactly. Chicken. Oh, chicken. Yeah. Chicken is good. Like storing uh, food as a, a food item as your secondary quick slot item is very very useful because uh, they will uh, initiate like a uh, a regeneration. Uh, for you, uh, for you, so it replenishes your health uh, slowly but steadily for yeah, a short so uh, amount of time. Especially important on when playing on a harder difficulties where you don't have a re health regeneration during meditation. Exactly. Right. So you need to cover that. Yeah, and I and I actually like that. Like it's, um, it's nice, I guess, for the lower difficulty levels for people to be able to meditate mm -hmm. uh, and just get their health back. But it is it is really nice to not have that. Uh, as a as an option, only because it starts to make so many of the other resources in the game actually you know matter a lot more, and I I prefer that. I like that. 
So uh, if we want to continue our uh, exploration, we can actually go further down to the south. There's still a lot of distance to be covered. There's a huge mountain over there uh, right next to that island called the Simpa. And uh, there are all sorts of monsters there that we can check. And I remember some caves that we can check out, Ooh, which okay. because we haven't been to, uh, yeah, for example, like that. Um, or okay. we can uh, go to the east and uh, check out uh, the different locations. I, I know uh, some pretty awesome uh, spots that we can show without spoiling anything major. So, uh, cave or, or seaside? Uh, cave. All right, let's, let's go, go south towards the cave. Let's go for the cave. Uh, we can go for a fast travel spot, uh, or we can just go there. Go manually, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's show the people the world. That's part, of, yeah. That's part of the fun of, uh, of of this game is just getting lost in the exactly. in the open world and seeing what you see as you go. Yeah. Uh, so meditation. Yeah, we have mentioned this several times. This will allow you to fast forward time, and uh, the the actual time of day has an effect on uh, gameplay. Like uh, quest availability mm -hmm. uh, will be affected by it. Some quests uh, will only be available during nighttime. Some others during daytime. Certain some monsters only mon come out. Monster activity yep. uh, is affected by it. Uh, also, you can uh, just uh, trigger some awesome weather effects uh, or environmental uh, things. Like the night is freaking beautiful. I absolutely love it. Yeah, you guys have a full daytime, nighttime cycle. Exactly. Um, every minute takes about like five, six seconds to pass or so. It's it, it is that I've. I have not measured it, but yeah. It's that's about. I, I count. I measured it once, and it was. It's about. It's about five <laughs> it's or six. It's not seconds. actual twenty-four hours a right. day. Right, but it's still pretty. You know, it's still pretty sizable. Ooh, nice. Also, wolves are quite formidable. I I also thought that they're going to be the easy enemies that you. No, can in put. packs they are so so treacherous. Exactly. Um, as you'd expect uh, wolves to be, right? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the, you have the full day-night cycle, but you also have dynamic weather. The weather is not scripted. The weather is dynamic. So uh, yeah, time of time of day and location and weather uh, really kind of adds like a very organic uh, feel to the environments. Like they they don't always look the same. They don't always feel the same. Um, a lot of different moods it sets. And the system behind it, we have uh, experimented with it a lot. Like, uh, uh, the guys responsible for it uh, have invested incredible amounts of effort and time to make it feel natural. Like, uh, there's been a lot of work into uh, uh, put into how uh, the weather changes, how fast storms roll in and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The lightning, how it looks, how it lights the environment. And, of course, that applies differently uh, to each hub. Like, uh, for example, White Orchard. Uh, the uh, the first area you're in uh, looks uh, completely uh, different, like very very characteristic to that uh, to that area, and uh, you will see uh, so, a completely different weather system in uh, No Man's Land, and of course Skellige is entirely different uh, as well. So there's a lot of unique uh, things to see. Um, one of the uh, people, are, uh, someone is asking about what fear, what the horse's fear level uh, is. And, uh, um, well, the horse is of course a living creature. Uh, part of the whole living world uh, and uh, it is affected by the events happening around it so if there's combat going around the horse for example then it might start to panic that you can find uh, in uh, different ways like you can abandon disengage combat wait until she uh, calms down and then uh, get back to the combat or get off the horse uh, before uh, they panic and throw you off or use axie uh, because uh, if you sit on horseback uh, you can uh, use your axie skill that is basically a charm to calm down the horse and uh, they will be able to persist longer in a combat situation. So yeah. it, it, it is another layer of the gameplay that you need to pay attention to. Plus also, we got some items. Right, there's a there's a there's some of your, one of your pieces of horse equipment, the exactly. blinders, uh, increase the 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 fear threshold, mm -hmm. so uh, the the horse can stay in combat longer. And as I mentioned, I'm I'm sure I don't know if it's the only thing like that in the game. There is a, a decoction that you can drink that will um, make it impossible for the horse to ever. Uh, it basically makes the horse fearless for all intents and purposes and uh, increases the damage of all of your mounted attacks. Exactly. So there's a... Uh, like, mounted combat is actually... Like, it's pretty satisfying. Yeah, it's pretty satis <laughs> It's very satisfying feeling and actually quite viable if you have the right equipment for your horse and if you have uh, the right potion. Especially if you, uh, like, uh, get a feeling for the swings you do from horseback. I really dig that. When you time your swings well and mm -hmm. then you decapitate people, uh, it just feels good. Well, you had that slow mo effect going mm -hmm. uh, before. Yeah. How did you trigger that? Uh, if you p push a button and hold it, then it's uh, slow motion. But if you tap it, then you have a single hit with gotcha. the slow motion. Exactly. Yeah. So you can uh, that allows you to be a little bit more precise about uh, 
think we should really like our caves because they feel really really organic so uh, maybe squaff some cat mm -hmm. you can right. do that or we can uh, use a torch if you have some i don't have a torch okay. yeah but you have some cat i saw you had but we definitely have cat, cat. so yeah cat just another one of those uh that's a that's a classic witcher potion you know people will know that from from playing the other games and it uh it gives you um Basically gives you night vision, makes everything kind of mono, uh, monochrome, black and white, easy exactly. to exactly. But it, ma it makes it easier to distinguish, uh, yeah. as you there can you see. Go. Beautiful. It's, it's quite useful in caves. Uh, in the past, I actually don't know this for The Witcher Three, but I know that in The Witcher Two, it also made it possible for you to see threats through the walls. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, no. if it still lets you do that. No. No. Okay. But w using the Witcher senses, though, you can kind of sense, mm -hmm. uh, you can hear things through the walls, and in that way you can actually kind of um, know when enemies are around, even if you can't see them. So, so it's on an empty cave? Yeah, this seems to be unoccupied at the time being, but that might be because uh, we came uh, in the wrong time. But, uh, of course, like, uh, no cave is literally empty, as you will be able to find some uh, specific stuff. Uh, Ooh, spe yeah, look at all these diagrams. The caves. Or the diagrams that were hidden here, yeah. Yeah, those diagrams are totally worth it. There's also some alcohol in there. Which is a very, very useful part oh. of the game because, uh, as we mentioned many times before, you have a lot of potions at your disposal and how you replenish them. Uh, we have uh, made a, a change to the game design part. Uh, so when you meditate, you will automatically use and consume one uh, unit of alcohol in your inventory to replenish uh, said uh, potion. And, and that's uh, all of your potions. Exactly. Yeah. And well, I think all of your potions that you have selected in your uh, active slot. So not every single oh, one of them. Oh, it's only the ones in your... So, uh, so decoctions won't... Um, uh, I believe I believe actively set uh, potions that you have set uh, in your quick slots. So, okay. uh, for example, if you have unlocked many many potions by uh, completing their recipes and uh, assembling them, uh, that would be very very wasteful if uh, each meditation would consume all the alcohol in your inventory to replenish sure. them. Of course. So you can be uh, uh, you can prepare for what you want to replenish by uh, selecting them and p uh, putting them in your active slots. So, uh, what would you say was the kind of the impetus behind that? Because um, you know, obviously, it's a big departure from the way The Witcher has been in the past, where before you crafted a potion, that was it. You have this one potion, and you use it, and then it's done. Exactly. And then before you can use it again, you need to be able to craft another one. Um, now it's like once you craft it once, once you complete the recipe once, it's just a matter of having any any uh, strong alcohol, which is like Dwarven Spirit, Alkahest. All sorts um, of uh, wines that you find uh, in all sorts of places. Most right. importantly, we wanted to keep the challenge part of uh, and, and the rewarding feeling of uh, being able to uh, get all the ingredients and assemble the item which is never uh, never very easy but after that it's it's uh, sort of a nuisance if you have to gather all of those ingredients again and again and again sure. so so maintenance has been more accessible and casual but the actual assembly has been made a little bit harder and i think that's a perfect balance uh, between having to do something and being comfortable with what you have to do sure uh, it's a quality to me i see it as a quality of life upgrade you know mm -hmm. and and it also allows uh, in another way it allows it frees you guys up design-wise to challenge the player a little bit more, right? If if um, if you know that the player can make free, m much more free use of their potions, then that means you can make you can make encounters that much more challenging. Exactly. So there's a certain uh, hardness and challenging uh, challenge to uh, uh, how, how should I say it? Like. Uh, Preparation for combat, like not many video games. I don't, I don't know of like too many video games who have this, uh, this atmosphere, this, uh, this spirit in in the game. So you have to think ahead, and uh, we wanted all of our features to be compatible with that uh, aspect. So uh, there's a lot of information you can gather about monsters, enemies, and such, and there's a lot of uh, game gameplay features supporting this, and it's a fun way uh, to to kind of uh, pre-measure your strength and all the things you have to do in order uh, to prepare well for an upcoming battle should be challenged but still very accessible and on that on that note um, with preparation so it, the design decision was made in Witcher 2 that in order to drink a potion you would need to sit down and meditate pick the potions you wanted to drink and then go through the meditation process and this was something you could not do in combat or with enemies anywhere in your vicinity um, some people really love that decision because they felt like it was in keeping with the Witcher lore. It really is all about predicting what you're going to be up against and preparing. But other people felt that it was a frustrating change from Witcher 1 where you could quaff potions in combat. It was risky in Witcher 1 to do that, but you could do it. Um, you guys have gone back to the... Uh, po we can you, you can drink potions mid-combat now. Um, my theory on that was that 
When you've got this big wide open world and you can literally just be anywhere constantly, you can be going from one uh, set of enemies to the next to the next to the next, and you don't know what you're gonna you know what you're gonna run into in the open world. It could be anything anywhere. I feel like in that kind of an environment, preparing in the way you did in Witcher 2 would have been almost impossible, right? You, you'd be stopping every few steps. Yeah, to there's be like, an entirely different pacing yeah, to the open world exactly. exploration and the, and the distance and the time, amount of time spent between combat, which is completely up to the player. Like in Witcher 2, it was much more controlled, I would say. Yeah, of course. Uh, while not being a completely linear experience, it was much more con uh, controlled uh, from the game design side, right? Sure. But this adventure is completely up to your decisions, your rhythm, how you want to progress, if you want to uh, sidetrack, explore, climb, fight, whatever. So whatever you have to do, meanwhile, to to ma uh, for maintenance, let's say that, uh, has to be a little bit more snappy, a little bit more accessible, so right. it does not hinder uh, anything you do. It still requires certain time, certain uh, effort, but it's, uh, it's, it's very comfortable, but not uh, comfortable to make it gamey. Yeah, and at the end of the day, um, you've got this... You go through the, the trouble of creating a game system like Alchemy, right? Mm -hmm. The worst thing is when people don't engage with it, right? Because they feel like it's either inconvenient to engage with or where they feel like the resources are so scant to, to, to engage with it that they only want to do it when they really know they 100% need it. And then you know what happens? They just forget about it. It becomes something they don't use. Yep. And um, that's how I felt mostly. I mean, I loved The Witcher 2, but that's how I felt almost entirely through The Witcher 2 is that I just forgot that Alchemy... I almost totally forgot that mm -hmm. Alchemy existed, um, except for the really, really big key fights. Here, I felt like I was constantly experimenting with different potions and um, using it on a regular basis, and I felt like uh, Alchemy was a worthwhile uh, skill tree to explore because um, they were that usable. Uh, it didn't make the game easy. It didn't make Alchemy less uh, deep. It just, uh, it just made it something that felt more valuable to use and more usable. And, uh, hey, you did a lot of work to make the system. You might as well... Uh, uh, make it uh, make it something that everyone can can use on a regular basis. The pre preparation is was kind of shifted also to to the builds because you have to prepare and you have to choose right. the right build and for the right encounter. So basically, mm -hmm. that's also okay. What's going on? Yeah, exactly. This is a village, and we have stumbled upon a a situation. Okay. Ooh. Actually, I see it. Ah, exactly. <laughs> Geralt. Dumber than a hunk of lard you are. He means <laughs> you're common folk. You're the mutant, the poxy freak. Get him, lads. Yep, we are not here to preach morals again. <laughs> so this is one of the things that I do really love about this. Uh, especially once you get later in the game and you become uh, stronger and stronger. Um, I, I generally do play games trying to be the, you know, as much as you can, the good guy. Though there's no such thing mm -hmm. as that really in The Witcher yeah. per se. But I, I do try to do that. But man, there's nothing more satisfying to me than when there's a bunch of bullies yep. who think they're the biggest guys on the block, and they talk big to you like they have, like like they like they, they can deign to threaten Geralt. Oh, you know, oof, oof. He's not gonna get up from that. Um, this is something I really dig in our game world that we uh, achieved with the storytelling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good storytelling over there. <laughs> uh, that choices are not super clear. You cannot play the good guy. It's almost impossible because the world is very, very deceiving, just like sure. it would be in real life. So uh, even though you think you're making a good decision, it might be a very bad decision or a completely different decision that might yield a, a completely different outcome that you were anticipating. Oh, totally and the, true. And the game is totally full with that. Like, uh, it, it's uh, it's there in the city, it's there in the wilderness with monsters, with people, with people monsters, as we just saw <laughs> right. quite recently. So this is something that uh, I think many, many people will have a lot of fun with, exploring the full story. There's a lot of these opportunities. And, you know, Geralt is no, uh, he's no crusader, right? Oh, but yeah. uh, I think especially because combat feels so um, precise and crunchy and satisfying in this compared to the other Witcher games, um, there is something really empowering about putting a bunch of thugs and bullies in their place. Mm -hmm. Like more than ever, I feel I feel that way. Like when uh, like when I have a dialogue uh, choice to make, when I make a threat, I feel like it's a threat. I feel like these people are going to be scared, and if they're not scared, 
they're that gonna they sh they're going to be punished for it. And that's a cool as a as a that's exactly how I want to feel when I play a video game as a video game video game protagonist. That's how I want my protagonist to feel: is threatening, imposing, uh, competent. Um, and Geralt has always had that to an extent, uh, but I feel like in this game it's it's doubled uh, over by the fact that uh, the combat feels so uh, meaty, and that his ma all the elements of his tool set feel so usable and so viable. Exactly, and uh, again, getting back to uh, the w one of the concerns, one of the people said that uh, Geralt uh, uh, might feel like a pre-made character, like all the choices that you can apply in the story and how your story progresses uh, really turns him into this very, very immersive character that uh, basically enables you to have your own adventure that you can shape at basically any time with fights and with conversation options. That, uh, so we're using, yeah, yeah, g getting back to combat a little bit. Uh, I really like this uh, this sign. It's called Erden. Erden, yeah, it's it, really strong. It's uh, a trap on the ground that slows down enemies uh, who get into its uh, area of effect, and it's super useful against small groups of enemies like that. Like particularly good against Neckers, and uh, which can be super annoying when they come in groups. So it's really good to use uh, use it against them and wolves. And against wolves, it's really really cool. Yeah, and of course it's uh, it's really key against uh, against specters, um, you know, who are intangible. Otherwise, oh, you have exactly. to you have to put down uh, Erden to uh, in order to even be able to hit them. So, um, really key in those fights. Neckers surface um, here, dig their way out. Oh, you've stumbled upon another nest. Yeah, the roots of the tree. Just take that uh, out. To put a line on. Just be careful. <laughs> and you get oh. some really good crafting materials when you take down a a. Uh, a monster, uh, a monster lair. Always, let's see what we got. Yep. Yeah, some eyes, some hearts. That's yep. Good crafting material. Yep, the necker, necker blood. Let's take it. <laughs> cool. Sweet. Um. So someone, so yeah, someone's asking me a, a question about my review. Actually, they um, they asked that the, when I. Uh, this is uh, this is Cillian McGinn. Thanks, Cillian, for uh, for writing in. Uh, wants to know, you know, when I played for review, what was the thing that surprised me? the most um, and I think the thing that surprised me the most is how much the degree to which your decisions even the small ones affect something you know like some and a lot of games where you when it's about like you make decisions and it matters in the world it's like there's like a binary choice of like either you go left you go right and then it's like if you go left then all these people die and if you go right all these people are saved yay yeah. you know like not to say that there's nothing, anything like that in The Witcher. There are big decisions like that, um, but they don't, they never work out the way you think they're going to, for one. But two, more importantly, there are, uh, there's, there's countless, and again, I don't want to spoil anything, so I don't want to give specific exa examples, but there are so many times where something that I thought was just a minor little side quest that was not going to have any ramification other than me just getting some XP and some crowns ended up with an innocent person losing their life with a, a, a mother a, a mother and daughter being reunited with um, a town uh, a town's economy returning to normal uh, and these are not major towns these are these are just little these are little stories in little villages in a huge world they're literally tucked away in the corners of, uh, of this massive world and when you go out that far you expect it to be nothing but just like give me my money you know, or give me the XP, and that's kind of it. And like, pretty much everywhere you go in this game has a has a story and has some kind of decision that you will make that can change what's happening for the people there or around there. Um, it's really yeah. impressive, and it's kind of the the thing that surprised me the most. I didn't think that 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 even the small things would matter so much. And this is another another thing uh, that I liked very much that uh, our writers, who did an excellent job, I think, assembling the story of the of the game, uh, play very well with uh, what you would presume uh, as a familiar situation. So you, uh, as as you said, you will stumble upon a lot of things uh, where you can make decisions that might seem familiar. Uh, that uh, yeah, I'm going to do the good thing here, and uh, then uh, something totally different or, or surprising will happen, and you will see uh, a lot of situations that you might recognize uh, as cliches uh, from other uh, video games or even movies, movie references, and they will have a totally different outcome that'll uh, totally uh, surprise you. All right. Oh, beautiful sunset. <laughs> this is something God. to admire. This happened to me. The last time I was so awestruck by um, 
by scenery, mm -hmm. by just uh, a time of day combined with weather and environment. The last time I would, the last time I was, I would, I felt like I needed to stop for every sunset was Ocarina of Time. <laughs> that was the last time I was like, I would literally stop everything I was doing and say, wow, I just have to watch this sunset. Mm -hmm. um, and this game did it to me constantly, and it was the first time in a very long time. It's a really weird feeling seeing, uh, seeing all this content finished and done because uh, I can I can say that whatever you see on the screen is handcrafted. There's uh, bits of uh, grass that are uh, procedurally generated, but everything else you see, the trees, the rocks, the pebbles, the, the whatever, of course the villages and the detailed locations have been handcrafted by our team. And uh, seeing how humongous the, the game world is, it, it really like... Uh, it's it's even unbelievable for me that all all this is is uh, completed in uh, such detail. Yeah, at the at the risk of uh, at the risk of sounding like a fanboy, you know, <laughs> really, guys, it's uh, it's it's an it's a remarkable achievement. Like you guys should be proud. Thank it's, you so much. It really it's, is. Feels nice, especially seeing all this completed. Yeah, I, I bet I must feel amazing. I think this is uh, the village called Benek. Uh, this this is the first windmill I ever built. No, 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 this is Lurch. It's a different Another place. One? Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's, it's a different... Uh, yeah, <laughs> one, of, one of mine, yeah. It is. It's, it was like uh, we started with uh, nice. one windmill, let's give a uh, characteristic uh, to the place, and then uh, people started liking uh, the windmills, and uh, several other windmill villages uh, started popping up. On Especially the map. late in the day like this, toward, um, it, it casts such a nice, uh, such a striking silhouette, you know, from, from, from a distance. Indeed. Especially with the humongous moon yeah, uh, behind yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, it is, it is indeed nice. Um, so, someone, I cannot pronounce your name, it's N-E-J-C, Nick, Nick, I don't know, thank you for watching, uh, <laughs> thank you for tweeting at us, uh, you want to know, uh, does the game force you to use signs and or alchemy to get through uh, to the end, or can you finish it only with uh, sword fighting, and I feel like, you know, you guys can chime in, but I, I did not feel like any one part, part of, honestly, I made it through this game with minimal I mean, obviously, I swung my sword a bunch, but I, I did, I put almost no points into anything regarding physical combat. Mm -hmm. Everything I put was into. I signs. would say, I would say, uh, instead of forcing people, I'd uh, say there are a lot of opportunities uh, to use something uh, else uh, besides what you would expect uh, as, as a proper solution. Mm -hmm. For example, we've mentioned Axie. It's a charm that you can use during conversations. For example, you can convince people. Uh, to uh, think uh, differently than uh, how they would have uh, thought before uh, you applied Axie on them. Uh, Axie is a really powerful tool, both in both in combat and in conversation. It's well, of course, you get an option to pay it instead of using Axie, or maybe do use it by force. Mm -hmm. Do it by force. So exactly, you're because not forcing any ways to beat the game. Axie might sound like a cheat, right? Because yeah, I can just uh, change other people's minds, but uh, you know, it's, it's still part of the lore and witchers have uh, a, re a certain reputation in certain circles, so uh, if uh, at one situation you might think like, yeah, I'm totally going to Axie myself out of this trouble, then you might catch the attention uh, of uh, nearby people, like, look a witcher, he's uh, mind-tricking that person so let's go get him, so you might uh, start a fight that you didn't want to uh, start uh, draw some attention on you, and so on and so on, and you st uh, start a uh, lens, uh, lens, uh, slide of events, and, e and even within the context of combat, you know, using it, like, sure, is it an effective tool once you put points into it? Yeah, but I mean, uh, let's think about all the points you have to put into it, right? You've got the first level of Axie, where where it's got a chance to fail, and um, guys will r bum rush you as soon as you start casting it. You know, you have to put three points into into the first into the first Axie skill just to get it to a point where it's honestly practical to use in uh, in combat so then then you go down the next level and you get access to the you know to the to the puppet ability but even at this point now you spent six six points plus two slots plus two slots so that there's an opportunity cost there like that that there's so many other things you could have done mm -hmm. with those points so exactly it's like, um yeah it's actually strong sure if you level it up all the way um yeah i mean it's great but you're going to be using up four of your 12 slots and um you know, for one skill. That's just for one skill. Exactly. You know, so everything. Nothing Plus, you don't have too many skill points in the game, right. so yeah, it get, gives you a certain advantage in certain situations, but you're forfeiting other things. So yeah, your choices matter greatly. Um, booth gaming, 
asks if uh, if there are any safeguards to uh, keep you from out leveling the uh, the main story content. That's balance. That's balance. That's my part of job. To be honest, uh, we decided to not scale uh, monster levels, which I think was a great choice. And with such a huge world and has such a huge game, it was tremendous work to figure it out and do it somehow. Uh, there are no safeguards. Yeah, if, and if, if you want to explore and spend 150 hours by just exploring and exping and doing exp and, and finding items, then you can come back to the story and probably There's you will have a higher level. Exactly, yeah. you can do that. But uh, of course, like the game isn't endless, so you cannot uh, level up to infinity mm -hmm. and just uh, uh, out outpower everything else in the story. So you, will, if you invest the effort. You will have an advantage initially, yes. but as you progress and as uh, the challenges go grow more challenging, uh, that kind of difference between you and the challenges will uh, mm -hmm. dissipate, mm -hmm. uh, and you will get back to the balance. So, yeah, you you can get, uh, gain the upper hand in certain situations, but it will not make you feel like you're cheating the system. Uh, for for people who are asking. Uh, if you're joining us late here on IGN Plays Live with The Witcher 3, uh, yes, this is the PC version uh, of the game. Um, running right now in uh, well over 60 frames per second uh, on ultra settings. This is uh, running on a GTX 980 and a Core uh, a, uh, an i7. So uh, for those wondering, there's a little bit of, uh, seems to be a little bit of confusion about what version we're playing. Just to clear that up for everyone, yeah, we are in fact playing on the PC version right exactly. now, and it's looking... Damn gorgeous. Um, Put a play. What the? What? Wait a minute. Right. Why am I so getting? So this is when Vince takes over. What difficulty are we on here? Uh, easy. Nah, it. it's medium. <laughs> Put it on. But we got a. We have a good gear. Okay, cool. So, um, so where are we? Where? Wh what's our goal right now? Where are we? Where are we headed? Let's beat some bandits and see how well can you do. I've got an okay. awesome cave that we can visit. We yeah, can where's that? Uh, um, it's a uh, north. Um, what's left? East. No, west. Northwest. <laughs> Northwest. <laughs> yeah, that's good from a level designer, right? <laughs> uh, south, south, south. To the right. Yeah, there's a little cave icon over there. This yeah. One? Yeah. Cool. We can check that out. That's uh, not too far away. Yeah, I'm not even going to fast travel that. All right, we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. Exactly. Did you set the marker there? Um, No, I didn't. I should. Yeah, because my sense of direction is not excellent. So I should definitely set the marker. Yeah, Where's this cave up here. Yeah, Press X to be awesome. Yes. There you go. And then you can go. It's a nice cave. Get up. So yeah, actually, I want to turn the. Oh, actually, yeah, if we could, uh, I'm sorry. Um, it's alright. I need to do one thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no. No. I'm looking for maybe it's different on the PC version where it is uh, to invert. Is it control settings? Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, just uh, you're looking for the uh, to uh, invert to invert. Oh, look, yeah. it was there. Oh, it yeah. was here. Oh, okay. No, 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 here. No. But for oh, the controller, right. both of them. N no, just Y axis. <laughs> not, not, are you kidding me? <laughs> get out of here. Who can give me the controller? Get out of here. Okay, that should be. Good. <laughs> what are you trying to do to me? Is it good? All right. Cool. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. I wanted to ask you, like, uh, do you have any me uh, super memorable moments that you were especially fond of from the game? Like, um, what you really liked? Not spoiling the story? It's hard. You see, it's tough because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. Um, I, I'll i say this. Um, the, the, I'm not going to give any specifics, but uh, in the first quarter to third of the game or so, um, there's a character, um, he's a baron. Um, and his whole storyline was very satisfying uh, to me. Uh, that storyline handled some, uh, some thematically some rough stuff um, that uh, can easily turn into a one-sided conversation and a one-sided issue. And uh, it was handled in a, a way that was a lot more interesting, a lot more nuanced. Um, and I really appreciated that. That was one of my most, uh, one of my most memorable. Uh... Oh, hey guys! Oh, you can see the horse's fear level increasing with the. Yeah. Uh coming damage. You're pretty far from your enemies, so... Oh yeah, and the horse, I think, can can help you in combat. Like, uh, if uh, the enemies come close uh, to his uh, uh, hind legs, he will kick, and he will deliver massive amounts of damage. 
Like you can actually use that to your advantage. Oh really? He can he can kick. Yeah, I never. Yeah exactly. Never he can that. kick. I don't have. Cool. Awesome. Jump back on my horse. I'm still getting used to the uh, the icons being a little bit uh, uh -huh. different. I'm so used to the uh, the PS4 icons that I've been I've been uh, I've been playing with. Hey, why don't we stop here and search for this treasure? Oh totally. Let's see what's uh, so uh, on the mini map. You see that small white area that uh, indicates. Uh, a treasure uh, being available uh, in the in the given area. Also, you're using your Witcher senses. Yep. Those things in the distance, pulsating little rings, they indicate uh, sound Cri sources. Uh, sound sources, and right. they can so belong to all sorts of things, uh, like critters of the wood uh, or enemies. Uh, and uh, you can uh, judge that by uh, color information. Yeah. Take like, a look around. Also, th if you notice, things are highlighted uh, when you use the Witcher senses. Yes. Yellow things will uh, indi uh, indicate interactive things like lootable objects, uh, like herbs or chests or whatever. And and red, red will, things are clues. Will indicate that their clues are somehow uh, something that's somehow key to uh, to a quest. I'm gonna throw Quinn on uh, before I jump into this uh, into this fight here. <laughs> oh, all right. So these are neckers. That plan was a good idea. No more questions? Something I learned uh, early that was important for me is that, uh, generally speaking, uh, trying to parry monster attacks is not super optimal. Uh, it can you, you can do it, but uh, it's more often than not they kind of break your defenses. Also, it well, depends on the situation. Like, uh, if they no. come at you uh, in groups, then you should uh, resort to ca crowd control, whatever that might be that you want to do. And there are cases which is, uh, parrying is very effective, uh, counter-attacking. For example, uh, with water Greyfuck, you can cut off uh, the Greyfuck tongue, so she cannot bite you again and she cannot slash you. Flash yes. You. So that's a useful tool. So this this wasn't the treasure that we were looking mm -hmm. for. Oh, but it might be in this cave. Under, it might be actually underneath in this There's cave. There is a chance for that. Yeah, let me get... Uh, let me get uh, some some cat. Let's drink some cat to take a look at the inside here. It's an abandoned mine. No, it's it, not. There we is go. It, is it not? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, my God! Just don't spoil it. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> so that's... I'm going to guess that was our hidden treasure that we I was looking for. Could be. Yeah, no, that was definitely it. That had to have been. <laughs> that was... Uh, I don't. I don't know what I just found. That I mean, I know kind of what I just found, but I don't know why you don't want people to see it. But we're you were supposed to just get in, kill everything, and just go out. <laughs> and you just found the biggest treasure of all. <laughs> no, I'm Is, kidding. I hope. Uh, I hope it. No, nah, it wasn't the biggest. <laughs> that was definitely the most Witcher gear diagrams that I've seen in one place uh, so far in the game. It but was. It was sweet, sweet stuff. Oh, but you know yeah, what? I need to meditate to get mm -hmm. this cat off of. This cat effect out of here. Cause Meditate on that. You should. Yeah, I'm gonna think about this for a little bit. We're gonna <laughs> take a take a time out to talk it over. Focusing on all the swag you got. <laughs> so the effect of the cat potion wore off. Cool. Now I can actually see out here a little bit more effectively. Exactly. Not so not so monochromatic. I yeah. love uh, how uh, foliage. Uh, I love how it reacts to the wind. It's really. Uh, like that's the that's the kind of thing that, that that people try to do a lot, but it almost never looks right, and it actually looks really, uh, really good here. I think I remember uh, one of the first attempts in video games uh, was Stalker, Call of Pripyat, which oh, did, yeah, did yeah, the yeah. field effect. So uh, yeah, comparing it to the good old days uh, of video gaming, uh, I can see some real nice progress in, in uh, foliage, especially like the trees sway so nicely in the way. Oh yeah. So I think we're here, right? I think this is the cave that you. Yep, we're. Oh, exactly. Yeah. We're at the. At yeah. the. We're at our destination. And uh, henceforth, you are free to explore as you please or wish. What happened? Did you close all the? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna hand this back over to you for a second right. because I. Let me help you with that. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of housekeeping to do. Let me take a look here. There you go. You like I play. No, I don't want to ruin the amazing Jeez. adventure. Like I've got different skills. I need to change this up. Oh first. yeah. I don't know how to play with Inventor. <laughs> Actually, now would be a good time to mention uh, the option screen, right? Because mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, some people are going to... Actually, people have been asking about this. We'll get to this in one second, but... Uh, oh, again, we actually have a question about that. Oh, yeah, we do, we do. But cool. uh, but real quick, uh, again, folks, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. You're, uh, you're watching IGN Plays Live. We're doing The Witcher 3 today, as we're going to be doing a little bit more in the future. Um, we got more coming up on IGN, uh, IGN Plays Live um, later today and later in the week and next week. Let me run down what we got happening for you. Uh, right after this at 3 p.m., we're going to be doing a live version of Podcast Beyond, so stay tuned uh, with us for... For that, uh, then on Friday uh, we've got a couple of things planned at uh, at noon, uh, at noon Pacific we're going to be doing some Rock Band four, and then at one o'clock we'll be doing more of this fine game, The Witcher three, The Wild Hunt, and then on uh, Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday. Uh, at 10 a.m., we're going to kick off with Destiny House of Wolves. That's the new expansion coming for Destiny next week. Um, and then we're uh, right after that, at 1 p.m., we're going to have uh, even more Witcher 3. So uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, IGN Plays Live. And, and uh, if you like what you see, uh, please keep coming back. we got a lot more coming, uh, coming for you. So we were about to say, yeah, some people are asking to see... Uh, they, they wanted to see specifically the graphical options menu. Can we show that to them real mm -hmm. quick? I think we can. That'd be great. Yeah, some people are asking about it. So we have got an incredible amount of options that you can fine-tune your experience with, uh, graphical and gameplay-wise. Let's uh, first uh, show the graphical settings. As you can see, we were true to our words, and we are indeed playing on Ultra. Awesome. Uh, like every setting on. And, uh, yeah, we wanted to... Uh, yeah, l l I'll let you browse through mm -hmm. them. Just took it through. Exactly, just a quick through. Uh, cool. It's an SSAO slider. Oh. Cool, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, oh, yeah, this is something uh, where it uh, gets interesting. Like, you can actually customize your uh, gameplay experience by customizing elements of the of the graphical user interface. Uh, like, uh, if you... Uh, Let's turn it off all. Look um. at the options. You can completely switch off everything and uh, focus on the adventure, like health bars, mini map, uh, skills, active uh, effects on you. You can turn everything off, and then you will end up with something like this, where you can just focus on exploration, looking around, and you will get like prompts maybe uh, qu about quest updates. And of course, if you enter the menu, you will see all your stuff. But this is pure, pure gameplay lore and adventure. And now so I'm lost in the cave. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if, if, if that is your thing. Yeah, like if you are in a maze like that or a dungeon, it's actually advised to uh, <laughs> keep the keep the mini map on. And and something else that's nice about the interface is that um, you, when you set when you decide you know hey this is the quest I'm gonna track, it doesn't just lock you into uh, it doesn't just say here go you go in that general direction. There's a you can turn on a pathing tool that exactly. will kind of say hey take this road now go here now kind of like a, a you know kind of like a Witcher GPS. But that's you know if that's too handholdy for you you can turn just that on and off. You know so it, it's not just that you can turn everything off. It's the the minutia with which you can customize the experience. Exactly. That's uh, that's uh, that's pretty pretty cool. Pretty also cool. some of the elements. Uh GUI elements are tied to difficulty, if I remember correctly, right? Is, is that still so? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. So I don't want to mislead people. Like, uh, there were design uh, experiments and decisions uh, playing around with that, but uh, that's that's something we need to find out more about. Interesting. But but it makes some sense, right? Like, um, so something that, the, that, the, that you guys do do with the difficulty level uh, is on the higher difficulty levels, you, can't, you can meditate, but you don't get health back. Um, and exactly. that's that's that you have to um, well play a little more like a Witcher, and you have to lean on your potions, and you have to lean on your on your supplies and stuff. Uh, would be interesting if if uh, if certain other uh, things were off by nature, and that you had to again like a Witcher be I don't know more aware of your surroundings, um, you know maybe do some kind of tracking of your own, being able to uh, kind of pick out what certain things mean. That could have been an interesting experiment, but. Uh, I think it worked out. Uh, I think it worked out I, for the I best. I remember way there were a lot of decisions uh, taken into consideration, but uh, what we ended up with, I think, it's a nice amalgamation of, uh, of the best choices. Oh yeah, this is this is also cool. Uh, it's side quite quest. long. Should we just? Oh, we can we can just uh, we can just take a look around. Uh, you know what I wanted to show uh, on the. Uh, yeah, we've got about 20 minutes left, so uh, oh, if geez, there's anything in particular that you very limited really needed to get to the western shores. Uh, <laughs> We got barely any like, but when you really look at where we started and how much more south there is, we could go. We were we went barely oh, anywhere. God, yeah. We we got halfway south. <laughs> 
and we weren't even starting from the northernmost point on this one map. Exactly. Like we've been to Novigrad and we haven't even touched the gust fields, the northeastern bits. Uh, no, 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 no. Not no. just yet. Not just yet. Skellige is for, for today at least off limits. But yes. uh, you might be surprised where we go in a couple of days. That's right. <sighs> on Friday, you got to come back on Friday to see more. Exactly. On Friday, we will do Skellige. But first, before we do that, mm -hmm. the last 20 minutes should be spent. Uh, I want to show uh, the eastern, uh, the western shores. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe a little bit to the south. Uh even more like Coast of Rex. Yeah, exactly. I want to check out the Coast of Rex. Should we fast travel there? Yeah, yeah. Let's go there because, uh, well, well or, or you can just go there. Uh, I don't know where. Nice, nicely fill out the 20, <laughs> 20 minutes. Go where west. Go west. Go west. <laughs> Which way is west? Jesus, Fukash. Where's You're the open? worst witcher ever. <laughs> How do you be the best Just one. look at the, check the mossy sides of the trees. Okay, let's turn on. <laughs> <laughs> let's turn on some UI options on. Uh, Noob. <laughs> Don't you know your game area by every tree? <laughs> by right now? There's no way you can know Look all this. <laughs> like it's, oh my god, I, I don't know if how accurate the numbers are, but um, it's like I've read something like the Skell the two main maps, this map and Skellige together are like one and a half times the size of GTA V. I'm like, that's preposterous. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the exact numbers. I only know the uh, old official comparison. Like, you might remember how uh, big uh, Witcher 2 was. And the original comparison said something like, uh, the Witcher th uh, Wild Hunt is like 35 times bigger yeah. than the entire game uh, area of, uh, with the Witcher 2. But I think we've remeasured since then, and uh, the numbers were even greater than that. I'm uh, afraid to quote, but... It's it's I think twice as much as we originally uh, oh wow uh, measured so yeah it's it's pretty huge but but really I don't want to say numbers like uh, just right. uh, <laughs> it's watch, watch, freaking huge watch watch <laughs> how much we explored and uh, <laughs> yeah in in the like uh, the given amount of time we've spent like uh, an hour and a, and a half good hour and a half uh, with exploring and uh, yeah we have covered a very very minuscule part of the game world and uh, yeah I think the the kind of gameplay uh, we had right now confirms that uh, it's rich you you will have a bunch of events <laughs> quite, um, quite a lot I want to talk a little more about difficulty if that's okay um, sure. so you know some games uh, when you're upping the difficulty they mostly focus on it just being like uh, enemies deal more damage you deal less damage um, some games take a, a bit of a different approach where, where they just make enemies smarter or they make more and have it there be more enemies how, how does how does difficulty actually scale up in the witcher 3 and and what what can people expect out of the highest difficulty levels that's something Wilkush might want to talk about well uh, enemies eat harder of course that's 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 one of the things that uh, the monsters are more prepared for for girl uh, I think it's more focused on uh, being prepared gear wise to, to craft a better gear, to, to have a better gear, good, to have to be prepared with potions and bombs. Uh, this is a very important aspect of, of higher level diffic difficulty levels. Plus, the approach to combat is totally different. For if you play on normal, just pick your playstyle, your science or combat, or alchemy maybe, and you just you have some um, pro maybe you might have some problems, but it's more about having fun and enjoying the story and uh, and using whichever skills you want to. If you if you're good at them, you can. But on the harder difficulties, you have to think how to approach combat. You have to pick up different skills, maybe more defensive to survive the battle. Plus, uh, focusing on, on on gear is is most important. So would you say that? So on higher difficulty levels, do the enemies actually deal more damage? They do. They do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are they any more aggressive? Do they get new attacks? Uh, well, attacks. Uh, no, no, they don't. Same, same attacks, yeah. but, they, but mm -hmm. will they be more aggressive or more, any more intelligent? Yes, yes, more aggressive for sure. And what about quantity? Would you say there's more, uh, more, more to fight uh, on the higher levels? Are resources any more scarce? I'm wondering if you guys do any balancing um, that way. You are much more dependent on your resources, so the way you use them and consume them, uh, yes, they will become more scarce. For example, as we mentioned, uh, on higher difficulty levels, uh, health uh, does not... Uh, get replenished sure. during meditation and that might seem uh, like uh, n not not a big deal but uh, it, it might screw over your adventures if you don't pay attention mm -hmm. so you really have to uh, like uh, 
use use the mindset of the character you're playing uh, like uh, think ahead plan ahead uh, have different things in mind uh, based on what you learn so this this kind of difficulty change is not just again not just parameters but brings you into the game to think ahead and be aware of your uh, of your raw ingredients or all, all, all the ingredients uh, that, that uh, basically complete your adventure awesome um, again guys reminder uh we're uh, we're got 15 minutes left. Um, right after this, we are going to be uh, we're going to be going right over to. Nice. Uh, that was beautiful. <laughs> we're going to be going right. That was wow. That looked so good. Um, we're going to be going right over to a live version of uh, podcast Beyond at three o'clock. So make make sure to stick around uh, with us uh, for that uh, here on IGM Plays Live. Um, yeah, that was a that was a hell of a swing. It's a hell of a swing. Pretty nice. So yeah, in the past, uh, in the last 15 minutes that we have, uh, really don't want to spoil anything. Just uh, want to give a, a quick last feeling on what the game world has to offer. Go to the, the eastern end, just rush uh, on horseback uh, and show you how different the area around that part is. Like you the can western end, yes. Western. Right. I always, it's, it's <laughs> terrible. It's yeah. terrible. It's because of the jet lag. I blame it on the jet lag. <laughs> All right. Oh wow. Here we are. This is Shipwreck Shore, the coast of wrecks. Uh, because uh, the story of this area is uh, that uh, people, of course, want to escape the war one way or another. So there's famine, there is uh, death, there is uh, there's the plague, of course. So people grow desperate, and uh, these people uh, that uh, were pushed to the western side uh, of the map uh, basically wanted to get away using boats. But these waves, these waters are very, very treacherous. So that's why you see a, a whole lot of shipwrecks gathered around here because uh, the, the sudden changes of the weather kind of make it impossible to escape through uh, wow. through here. But still, uh, uh, people try. And you will see uh, all sorts of shipwrecks. And if you go uh, a little bit further down to the south, uh, you will see people trying to build some uh, really dingy uh, vessels uh, based uh, uh, made, uh, made of the... the uh, driftwood uh, that they scavenge uh, mm -hmm. of these areas and uh, this area is characterized by a lot of desperation like uh, mm -hmm. Which uh, actually I wanted to uh, move a little uh, more uh, inland uh, to the refugees camp if we can show you something really cool I think it's over there uh, so again this region is uh, characterized more uh, with uh, a lot of Desperation. There's going to be a lot of desperate folks uh, trying to uh, get by, make a living, and uh, some will resort to an even uh, stranger way of uh, of survival. Uh, but we'll see more of that. Uh, maybe we can fit that into the uh, past 15, the last 15 minutes. I, be yeah. I believe in Wookish. I believe. All right. Maybe we'll stumble upon some fights on the way. I don't know. We can. Oh yeah, this, these battles are... Oh yeah, that's it, that's it. That's the thing I was looking for. So some people have uh, completely accepted the end. The end of days uh, as it's coming. And that statue, uh, a herald of uh, the end of days, has been completely made out of uh, fish, uh, ship parts. And uh, these people basically uh, are the, the heralds of, of the final days that they have seen bad things happening and there is absolutely no hope for humanity so uh, they're accepting the downfall of huma humanity and, and worship some darker gods that they have e either invented or have existed in the local lore that's super cool yeah there's little things like this to discover every everywhere like even even when there's not like I said even though when there's not a cutscene or a dialogue like the uh, the there's world the environment tells a story there's a lot of passive storytelling like that we we invested a lot of effort into this to, to, to give a, a lot of richness to the world and they might not, e not even tie uh, into the main quest they just give give you a, a, a sense of uh, the atmosphere uh, that these are different times so these are not the casual medieval fetch some water from the woods uh, people but uh, there's some uh, real mature adventuring going on Okay, like I didn't need that. Because this is a scary situation. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're barely, barely alive. Oh my God! All right, that's so I day. So that's gonna impair his ability to fight. <laughs> that lack of an arm. Oh my God! You're, oh, you're wow. a monster. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What do these people do to you? <laughs> Well, as we like to say again and again, we are not here to preach morals. <laughs> we made it. We did it! Woo! Yeah! Nice. nice stuff. Good stuff, man. Really super good stuff. So I'm curious to see now what happens. Um, 
What happens to these people? Seems to have liberated this camp. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Um, they got a new leader. Yeah, they do. I, like, I, now I almost wonder what what. But of course, you know, you get rid of one bad boss. You, you sometimes you let in another bad boss. I don't know. I I don't know anything about this quest. But uh, you know, in the back of my head, I'm always. Maybe less than spoil it for the people. That's yeah, no, I, I don't know anything about it. I'm ge I'm literally guessing. You know, I don't want I don't want you guys to spoil anything. <laughs> but that's the really cool thing that I that I uh, noticed uh, again and again. We make these decisions. Like, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Exactly. In the uh, in the Witcher, you know, everything good that you do that you think, you know, you're a savior and you've fixed everything for people. Um, sometimes it's not the case. Yeah. And uh, well said. Super. Uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a rich, uh, it's a rich world. That's uh, it's not it's not rewarding in the in the typical sense of I feel like I'm a good person who's made the world a better place. It's rewarding because it's a place, and for better or for worse, you leave a footprint on it. And um, regardless of what you try to do, and because of the non predictability of your actions, there is always a weight to whatever you do, whatever you kill, whatever you fight, whatever you choose to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that makes like every every living minute of the world uh, very very different uh, than what you are used to. Oh yeah, the sign was warning us about pirates, and, and uh, there will be some folks <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to get other people's goods. <laughs> yeah, right. so we've got like seven or eight minutes left. I mean, feel free to run around and. Uh, Do we have any more questions for the guys? Yeah, let me let me let me see if we got any more interesting uh, any more interesting questions. Yeah, uh, so Raggy. Uh, Raggy writes in on uh, on Twitter and uh, asks uh, if there are unique armor or weapons that only drop uh, that you can only craft or find or get um, on the higher difficulty settings. Are there any nope. difficulty specific? Item uh, item availability like that is not dependent on uh, difficulty settings, but of course they are harder to get on higher difficulty settings. So that might make them feel unique. So uh, no, everything in the game I think is uh, always always available. Uh, to find or craft, but of course, if if you uh, switch to a higher difficulty level, that will greatly affect your chances. Um, someone wants to know if uh, if if the PS4 version looks uh, looks as good as this. And come on, man, like you, you need to ask that question. Of course, it doesn't. Like <laughs> you know, like the PS4 version looks terrific. It's it's beautiful, but um, I mean, you know the drill. Uh, a high end PC. Um, on a PC game like this, you know, run, running at max settings, there's no, there's no comparison. I mean, the PS4 version looks excellent. It's a, it's a beautiful jaw-dropping game, um, but uh, it's that much more jaw-dropping on, on PC. So, um, on, on, am I going to say on PS4 there's effects and things that have been seriously dumbed down? No, I would say the parody, the parody is actually pretty impressive in terms of the actual, um, the. The texture assets, you know, uh, and the effects. There's nothing that immediately on the PS4 I go, okay, that was just dumped down or not possible, you know, on the PS4. The, nothing like that, but I mean, um, yeah, it looks uh, definitely degrees better on the uh, on the PC and runs, uh, you know, obviously quite a bit uh, quite a bit nicer. But that's just the nature of that's not a da that's not downing the PS4 version. I, I gave the PS4 version yeah, a 9.3. But the reality is that a PC version, a beefed up PC, will always look better than a console. Let me tell you this: if you're interested in the differences uh, between the different releases and uh, and versions, like we had an event, we had a, a press event in in Sydney, Australia, uh -huh. where all three systems were on display and people could play with uh, whatever uh, system they chose to play with, and. Uh, we let them play, we let them casually switch between systems, and after like 5 or 10 minutes, you don't care. Yeah. You really don't care. There were the systems like right next to each other, you could easily make a comparison, and you don't want to. It's, it's so many other things uh, to, uh, to worry about, so, so many other things to uh, not worry about, that's, uh, that's not... Uh, to immerse yourself into to uh, uh, to play the adventure and everything uh, that you don't care about the, uh, the visual differences. They are so minuscule yeah. compared to the experience uh, that is provided by, uh, basically by the visual achievement the game has to offer on, on all three platforms. On every platform, the game is a blast, and on every platform is it is an achievement. G get it on whatever system you have. <laughs> if you have a super high-end PC gaming rig that will that will run it, and and you like you know, and that's the way you like to play it. Awesome. If you want to play it on your PS4, awesome. If you want to play it on your Xbox One, awesome. 
It's gonna the, look the, good. It's gonna look good. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna it's gonna look good, and uh, it's gonna be a great uh, a great experience. So, uh, so yeah, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Let's see what else we've got. We've got about f six minutes left here. Um. Uh, Ty wants to know. Hi, Ty. Um, wants to know if there's going to be a uh, photo mode integration for the PS4, uh, uh, or or and will you be able to preload if you if you purchase the game digitally? Will you be able to preload on the PS4 or uh, or no? I don't know for sure. This is something we should ask our PR guys. Okay. Uh, Maybe we can answer that next time. Exactly. On the, on we'll the next we'll try to get Friday. more information on that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, let's see. You're switching back to GYLN? Yeah, photo mode. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. So here's... Uh, here's photo mode confirmed. Yeah, this is... Yeah, there you go. There's photo mode. <laughs> you don't um, need any special setting for it. <laughs> so this is a good question uh, that I think... I'd, I'd love to hear your guys' take on it. Um, they, uh, Logan Samuels wants to know if... Um, he's never played any other... Uh, he's, he hasn't seen much of the other Witcher games, really. Wants to know if he can hop into this one without playing the others. Super important question. <coughs> the game has been designed and built from the uh, from the ground up uh, to be a standalone experience. Like uh, you can uh, play, and you are of, of course advised uh, to play uh, the previous titles uh, because they're cool. But this game, if you want to experience the full experience as it is, you don't have to play any of the prequels. This is a standalone game. Uh, that will give you a wholesome adventure without having to play any of the prequels. Of course, you are uh, you will have an awesome experience and you will see uh, some nice little references to the prequels and the story elements and that they are excellent games, so you are better off uh, playing them, but you absolutely don't have to. Um, piggybacking on that, I'm curious what your guys' take is on how important it is to have familiarity with the novels given the characters that the that the story revolves around. Faster. It's really cool to read the novels because they're excellent novels and uh, you will see uh, a lot of references to that that will make you nod uh, but it's absolutely not a necessity. So, you know, th this is a video game, not an exam. We mm -hmm. wanted to give you an, ex <laughs> sure. an experience that uh, can uh, fill your gaming nights uh, alone. So, yeah, it's, it's really... Uh, the no novels are really, really good. I really like them. <laughs> I got distracted by the game. It's okay. But you absolutely don't have to read them. Uh, but it's uh, recommended. Highly recommended. <laughs> you, I, I mean, uh, the whole game has been based on them. So uh, their story is, uh, is fantastic. Um, another, uh, this is kind of a PC-centric se question, but a really important one, I feel. Um, when will the modding utility be released? When will modding be... That is something we cannot uh, currently uh, talk about. That will be decided and uh, made public later. Gotcha, but you do plan on supporting mods for The Witcher 3? Uh, that also will to need to be commanded later, uh, officially. Gotcha. Eh, no worries. Um, yeah, I just know that's something that people care about. Um, what, uh, some people are asking, what's going to be uh, on the day, uh, the day one patch? What can they expect from that? Uh, it's going to fix some minor uh, bugs. Uh, mostly like uh, visual convenience stuff uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. Some optimization, I believe. Is that optimization going to be on the on the console versions as well? Yes. Yes. Gotcha. So, so because people have been asking me this, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's been tough to exactly answer. They people are curious about if the frame rate is uh, on the console versions will be any more stable on the final release compared to the one that I played for review. Uh, there's going to be some improvements, I believe. I don't know the exact values. Sure, no one's trying to lock you into like a, a number or anything. I know that's impossible to say, but the, the goal at least is to optimize it a little further for, for day one. It's going to be very nice with the patch, yeah. Cool, awesome. Um, kill more people! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the guys we just killed are cannibals. They're, they're the other kind of desperate people <laughs> that live in, <laughs> live in this region. They, they just basically uh, chose to just uh, feed upon the weak and, uh, and the non-willing. And of course, uh, that means that they have to get a sword in the face. Exactly. That's how that's how that's how things work in video games. So we are uh, Peter, Bukish. It's been mm -hmm. such a pleasure. We've got to awesome. we got to say goodbye for now, but not for forever. Exactly. Um, you can you can see more Witcher Three uh, this uh, this Friday on IGN Plays Live. But uh, thank you so much for joining us, guys. And now it's time for us to uh, head on over. Um, to uh, to be on before we do, just a, a little reminder about the other things we got going on. Uh, 
we are going to, uh, right now after this, we're going to be on, but then we're going to be on Friday uh, doing Rock Band 4 at, uh, at 12 p.m., and then we'll be doing uh, more Witcher 3 at 1, and that's on Friday. Uh, Tuesday, we'll be doing uh, at 10 a.m. Destiny House of Wolves. Uh, for a few hours, and then moving on to more Witcher 3, and again, that's on uh, at 1 o'clock, and again, that's on Tuesday. But uh, thank you so much for joining us here on IGN Plays Live. Now, uh, let's head on over and check out uh, Podcast Beyond. <laughs>